Number 10, Matthew Hurd. Number 12, Trakel Howard. Number 14, Quindarius McCall. Number 19, Caleb Fox. Number 19, D'Amico Tab. Number 27, Angel Diaz. Number 28, Kendrick King. Number 44, Riley Bowen. This is CGY Sports Watch Party, guys. This is the Central versus Thompson State Championship game out of Alabama. CGY Sports Party to you guys. I told you we were coming. Just like Dion, we coming. <laughs> All Rodriguez. right, that's all right, guys. So this is gonna be a great ball game. I'm gonna get set up and let you guys just just number 68, check Sam out the Cunningham. opening festivities with the game. There, they actually we missed the um, announcement number of KC the Central Red Devils, but they are bringing in Thompson Warriors. Number 73. So Matthews we're gonna um, we're gonna let this thing go, guys, and I'll be back in. Check in in a minute with the game. Number 87, Jack Davis. And number 90, Jacob Bonilla. Head coach of the Warriors is Mark Freeman. We bid you a good evening from Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa, where the Alabama Community Colleges presents the AHSAA Super 7 State Championships on APTV. We are getting set for the 7A State Championship game. Both teams have made the walk into Bryant Denny, warming up for the big matchup tonight. The Thompson Warriors, the four time defending champs, taking on Central Phoenix City, marking the fourth time in the last six years these two teams have met on this stage in this game. Thanks for tuning in to our live coverage of the Super 7. I'm Mickey Shadricks along with Coach Rick Rhodes. And, Coach, this matchup certainly doesn't disappoint. You've got the four time defending champs going for the five peak. Central Phoenix City, the last team to beat Thompson in the playoffs back in the 2018 championship. Funny you should use the word matchup because we're going to have some great ones tonight up front in the skill areas. It has all the earmarks of a classic. Can't wait to get started. Can't think of a better venue for this marquee matchup than under the bright lights at Bryant Denny Stadium. When we come back, we'll have the coin toss, the keys to the game, and the kickoff. The 7A state championship game coming your way next. Kitty with refined taste. I know exactly what to look for when I'm out for a stroll. Hmm, a house with natural gas. They're not hard to spot. Just look for the unmistakable charm of a natural gas lantern and the meal tickets enjoying themselves in the backyard, cooking up perfectly grilled treats on their natural gas grills. <laughs> Too easy. And providing toasty spots for a cat nap. Now this is the good life. Visit my website and learn why natural gas is a home's best friend. We all make choices about alcohol. Kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Yeah, have fun. Hey, uh, remind me about that party again. And adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations, and they want honest answers in everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. When driving, share the road, not a post. Bad. Alabama has a code of the road, and knowing it helps you follow it. This is a message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. When driving, wear a seatbelt, not a filter. What? Alabama.
Alabama has a code of the road, and knowing it helps you follow it. This is a message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. Hi, I'm Wayne Reed, Executive Director of Alabama Public Television. We're excited to carry live coverage of the Super 7 High School Football Championships for a second year, allowing everyone in Alabama to see these games. This broadcast is made possible by several generous sponsors, but now I'd like to ask for your support as well. Your gift can help APT tell more great Alabama stories and create new educational opportunities. Call 1-800-239-4000 or give online at aptv.org. And back at Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa, we are just moments away from the kickoff to the 7A state championship game as Central of Phoenix City and Thompson taking the field here at Bryant-Denny Stadium. Time now to take a look at our keys to victory presented by the Alabama Home Builders Association. And Coach Rhodes, break this one down for us. Well, we could talk an hour about this, but there's a couple things that I, that I think are really important. It's really important for Central Phoenix City to throw the ball when they want to, not when they have to. Uh, in order to do that, they're going to have to run the football effectively. It, it's, I think it's also important for them to really get off to a great start. They want to start fast. For Thompson, listen, they're playing against a great offensive team. They want to keep that football. They don't want to let that Phoenix City Central offense get on the field. And their play-action game has set up everything for them this year. Look for that. That's going to be a big, big key in this game. And time to check out the coin toss down at the 50-yard line. Let's join our public address announcer. Boy, head cheer coach and assistant AD Richard Sutton, director of bands Graham Bennett, and home field chain crew chief Randy Durrett. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, please stand and give a big round of applause to these honorary captains and for all the teachers and administrators who support our students each and every day across the state of Alabama. Also assisting in tonight's coin toss and representing the quarterbacking Children's Health Foundation is special guest Kobe Chatta from Homewood, Homewood Middle School in Homewood, Alabama. Kobe and their family represent many families who directly benefit from the work of the Quarterbacking Children's Health Foundation. Please join us for a warm Super 7 welcome to Kobe and their family. Gentlemen, congratulations for making it to the 2023 Class 7A State Championship. I hope you consider it to be an honor to be selected as being captains for this game by your coaches. We ask that you take care of your teams and play with good class and sportsmanship tonight. Tonight, presenting the coin that we're going to toss with is Kobe from the Children's Miracle Network. We thank you for being here. Thank you, Kobe. Central Phoenix City, you're the visiting team. We're going to ask you to call the toss. My coin says heads on one side and tails on the other. Heads and tails. It's your call. What do you want? Heads. What do you say? Heads. Heads it is. If I drop it, we'll do it again. It's tails. Tails. You win the toss. What do you want to do? Nobody move. Thompson has won the toss and defers their choice to the second half. That means you want the ball. Which way do you want to kick from? You want to kick that way? All right. You guys go to this 45, face this way. You guys turn around right here, face this way. Central Phoenix will receive the opening kickoff in the north end zone. And the coin toss pre presented by Children's of Alabama, thanks to our referee tonight, Kirby Michaels. Well, we've got every angle of this 7A state championship game covered for you, including down on the field. First off to the visitor sideline, welcome in Susan Carruthers. Hello, Susan. Hey, guys. Welcome to the sidelines. It's electric down here. Listen, I got to talk to Coach Patrick Nix before the game. Of course, former Auburn star and father of current Heisman candidate Bo Nix. Everyone's here tonight. It's a big week for the Nix family. But I asked Coach Nix, you know, it's none of it's about that tonight. It's about the Central Phoenix City team and the Red Devils chasing a state championship. And I asked, I said, Coach, what do you need to do tonight to win this game? And he said, we need to be ourselves. We need to play our brand of football. And that's what it's going to take for them to win. All right. 
Okay, thanks, Susan. Over on the other sideline, Thompson head coach Mark Freeman in his ninth season with the Warriors, and he brings into this game an impressive resume. He's won six state titles in the HSAA, two at Spanish Fort, four with the Warriors, and tonight he has the opportunity to join a group of three elite coaches who have won seven. Now, Thompson as a whole looking to five Pete here tonight. The Warriors, there's only been one other school who has won five straight. That was Hazelwood High School back in the 1980s and 1990s. Thompson to one win, looking to win its fifth straight here in 2023. All right, thanks a lot, Susan and Christina. A lot of interesting angles to this one, Coach. This, this matchup has been building all season, hasn't it? No, it really has. I mean, two exceptional programs. I think Coach Nick's hit on something that is so important is that you, you know, live in the moment. Right now, the state championship is not important. What's important is to get a first down. And we are underway. The kick from John McGuire will sell into the end zone, and we begin with a touchback. Thompson winning the toss, and Central Phoenix City coming out first on offense. That's 51 out of 61 that he's put in the end zone this year, and he will be an important factor in this game. And there's a look at Central Phoenix City quarterback Andrew Alford what a season he has had he really has Mickey the 3378 yards 67 uh, percent completion percentage 44 TD passes on the year and first down at the 20 for Central Phoenix City and first play of the game and off up the middle and Nothing there at all for running back Zach Simmons Brown. Let's take a look at the offensive starting lineup for Central of Phoenix City. Coach, this bunch, they've been putting up a lot of points this year. As a matter of fact, the highest scoring offense in 7A. Yeah, it really is. And of course, I, when you start talking about that, you got to start with Cam Coleman. They, some people say the best receiver that this state has had since George Pickens, you know, now with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, great receivers, great quarterback, big, strong offensive line, and that would be a factor in this game. They average 44 points a game coming into this one. Here is Brown up the middle. Much better run here on second and long as it's going to set up a third and short for Central Phoenix City. Meanwhile, the Thompson defense, they're going to be challenged tonight, Coach. Not as big a defense maybe as they've had in some of their previous state championships. No, but they've got some stars as well. Anquan Fagan's a you know, four-star player. Jared Smith, another four-star player. Uh, Caleb Harris, a three-star player committed to Auburn. I mean, you know, there, there's a lot of talent, obviously, on that side of the football as well. Third and two for the Red Devils. Fake to Brown. They'll throw it deep. Receiver's got a step on the defensive back, and it's caught. This is Dalen Upshaw, and he's going to take it in for the game's first score. Well, that's your basic third and two call right there. Uh, but we do have some laundry back at the 28-yard uh, line. Beautiful throwing. Great, great go route. But Upshaw was probably one-on-one on one with the defensive back, but there you see the ineligible man downfield call. Now, it may have been a true lineman downfield, but on that kind of play, I wonder if one of the interior receivers wasn't covered up. In other words, two receivers on the same side, both on the line of scrimmage. Ineligible receiver downfield, offense. Penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Replay, third down. Well, the first big, the first big play in this game is, is a penalty. Don't. Well, I tell you, the only guy that I saw that looked close was big number 70. But it, it, and he looked to me like that. That was pretty close. Let's just say that. Well, the penalty wipes away a touchdown. Yeah. Beautiful throw. Great route. So third down and eight. A little different situation here. Offered back to throw. Plenty of time. You're going to air it out again. And it's caught. This is Coleman getting behind two Thompson defenders. So Central has the answer after the penalty. Yeah, they got Coleman matched up on the safety and ran a little smash concept, a short round underneath, and then watch the corner route in the left-hand side, top of your screen, and the ball is put right where you want to put it, right over that outside shoulder, impossible to defend. Wow. 
You're not going to see two better throws than uh, that young man just made right there. Tremendous start there for quarterback Andrew Alford. Connecting with what many regard as the top wide receiver in the nation this year, Cam Coleman. First and 10 at the Thompson 36. A little fireworks here early created by Central Phoenix City. This is Brown again. He spins his way down near the 30, so a, a six-yard pickup on first down. Yeah, good in, inside blocking right there and a, and a nice run uh, to pick up those six yards. Zach Simmons Brown averages six yards a carry. That's what he picks up on that first down. Long look to the sideline there. The play signaled in from the central sideline. Second down and four from the Thompson 30. Alford leaves it with Brown, and he is hit immediately. And the football came out of there as Thompson player may be on it. The initial hit was from Jaden Davis, the linebacker, and Thompson's got the football. Yeah, just a little a, a little inside stunt that you're going to see is as you look at the right side of your screen, gave a little stutter step and just uh, beat the right tackle clean. Ball pops out, and man, there is the first big turnover in this game. You know, we hadn't talked much about turnovers, Mickey, but I mean, they're always there. And you know, in championship games, you just cannot turn the football over. The initial hit by Davis, and it was jarred loose by Vinny Pires. Here's Trent Seaborn, quarterback for Thompson as they take over first and 10 after knocking the football loose and getting the first turnover of the game. This young man kind of emerged on the scene last year as an eighth grader, became the guy as the season went along, wound up leading Thompson to a state championship and won the Super 7 MVP. His first pass of the night is complete. Nice quick move there by the receiver, Deuce Oliver, who is a big play guy for this Thompson offense. Yes, he really is. Ran a little shallow right there and tried to get him some, some running room but uh, the central defense would have none of them. Thompson, this offense averages about 38 points a game. Again, Trent Seaborn, the freshman, leading them at quarterback, and he is quickly two for two. Is this wide open connection there with A.J. Green? And there's a there's a look at the uh, the Thompson offense. And, and of course, uh, you know, Green is 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 their leading rusher right there. Uh, very good receiving core. Not the biggest offensive line that you're going to see, and that's going to be a story. Uh, uh, Thompson is uh, is outweighed on both offensive and defensive lines, uh, and that'll be an interesting storyline as we go. Seaborn quickly, three for three. And it's complete once again to, to Green out of the backfield. Nice gain on first down. So here's a look at the Central Phoenix City defense giving up about 12 points a game coming into the state championship. Yeah, the, the, uh, the, the central defense, uh, Sanks, is a three-star player that's uh, being recruited a lot of, by a lot of people. Keep your eye on Red Morgan, who's the leader of that secondary. Seaborn's pass is complete. Short gain, only about a yard to the 49. will set up a third down and four. But how about this four straight passes here? Yeah, all, all really quick stuff. Uh, you know, a little hitch that time. Before that, they had cleared out. Uh, and, uh, and, and kind of spit uh, green out of the backfield and were able to get the ball to him. Uh, just trying to control again that clock and down in distance. Third down and four. Another pass attempt and this is intercepted I think. I believe so. Central Phoenix City saying they have the football on the interception that time. David Glenn or I should say Brennan Core, the sophomore linebacker. Now let's see the official really incomplete. Really tries to fit the ball in a really tight window in here in this little curl in and you can see one, two, three white jerseys around there in a very, very tight window. Really a nice break on the football and I don't, I'm gonna get a good look at it right here. Coach Nix has already thrown the red flag out. <laughs> And now we get the official signal now is Central Phoenix City football so Coach Nix can get his red flag back. <laughs> well, it looked like he came down with a clean, but as they rolled over right there, it was kind of hard to see exactly who had the ball, but we get a definitive call and the second turnover in, uh, in, in just uh, around four minutes in this game. Interesting start. Both teams yes. were moving the football. Both 
drives come to an end with turnovers. And it's kind of interesting to see how both teams are starting this game. Uh, Thompson with uh, a very methodical uh, short passing game and uh, for Central Powder River and it looks like we've got a red flag thrown now from the Thompson side. Well coach Freeman has one of those red flags too and he just used it. You know, Mickey, I'd like to have one of those red flags when I could. <laughs> ruling on the field like was about we have an interception by the defense. That ruling is being challenged by Thompson. The previous play is under further review. You know those old westerns where they'd wear those uh, ammunition belts over there? Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd have one stuck in each one of those. Right there. Every yellow flag you saw would have been met by a red flag, right? Well, not every. Well, yeah, probably yeah. one. Yeah. Well, they're going to go under the hood and take a look at this, and I'm sure we'll also take a look at it again. It well, was a close play. It, it's going to be interesting. I, I think he clearly caught the ball, but if you watch when they go to the ground and roll, possession is a little bit um, maybe questionable, but we'll see. Here we go. First look right. from up high. That looks like a catch. Now they're on it's the ground. Ball. You see when they roll the second time, looks like there's some contest for the ball but looks to me like when he's down he clearly has possession I agree but hey I'm a broadcaster uh, I don't know. Yeah. well I think this replay clearly demonstrates that the officials first call is most likely the going to stand and of course coaches are notorious for lobbying their case I wonder, if, I wonder if Coach Nix is completely sure what time zone he's in. You know, it, you know, he's been in Oregon and back to back to Central, which is an Eastern time zone, and now in Tuscaloosa, he has been a coast to coast traveler. And here's Kirby Michaels After with the call. Review, the ruling on the field stands is called interception. Thompson has been charged with a timeout. They will have one review challenge remaining. Obviously, what Kirby Michaels just told us is very important to know. Not only do you lose a timeout, you're down to one yes. challenge the rest of the 7 yeah. 8 game, state championship game. Which, you know, as, as tight as these games are, that, that could be a factor. So Central takes back over, first down at their own 44. Neither offense has been stopped by the other defense. So. Second crack at it here for the Red Devils. They'll go with Brown right back up the middle. This time, uh, well defended there by the middle of that Thompson defense as they swarm Zach Simmons Brown and stop his forward progress after a gain of three. Yeah, real good surge by the defensive front for Thompson and uh, a great job by that second level and the linebackers getting that line of scrimmage in a hurry. They really only had about a five man box, but great reaction by uh, the Warrior defense. Second down, seven. Alford looking to throw. Dumps it off, and it is complete to Brown out of the backfield, and Brown picks up the first down to the Thompson 43, so nice decision-making that time by Alford. Yeah, great patience on his part, and really a great route concept. You know, the, the thing you want to do throwing the football is you want to challenge the depth and the width of the field on every play, and they try to get five out on every single route. That time they were able to hit the little check down for a big gain and a nice first down. Coach, what are you seeing about how Thompson is defending these big play receivers for Central of Phoenix City, especially Coleman? Well, you know, it's very difficult to, to double cover. A little razzle-dazzle here. It was going to be a pass downfield, but instead, Upshaw tucked it under and got what he could to pick up a three. Well defended in the second. Yeah, it really was. And, and, of course, you know, Thompson is dropping a lot of coverage yeah, deep, but I thought it was very good uh, awareness by, by Upshaw to not try to force the play. Instead, tucked it down, you know, got north and south and tried to get four yards, and that's about what he got. Second down and seven for the Red Devils. Brown and Brown is hemmed in right at 
the line of scrimmage. Very little gain, if any. Yeah, you get a lot of movement in the in the uh, Thompson front. That uh, you know they don't they don't have the size that that Central has, but they're doing a good job of using that quickness to penetrate those gaps and and uh, disrupt those schemes. Central did convert on a third and eight on their first possession. They've got a third and seven here. Possibly four down territory if they don't make it. Five receivers offered. Over the middle pass incomplete. Upshaw was the intended receiver at the 35 yard line. So it will bring up fourth down. Yeah, ran, ran a little dig route underneath, tried to clear it out and hit him over the middle. Uh, ball was off target and pretty well defended. What do you think, Coach? Here, go for it here. I think when you average 44 points a game, you're in four down territory just about anywhere. Coach Nick seems to agree. Offense stays out on the field. So fourth and seven, Alford back to throw. Goes deep. And the pass is intercepted inside the 10 yard line by guess who? Big play defensive back Anquan Fagans. What a season this young man has had. Well, and I, you got a great example of just how good a football player he is. He was he was right on the hash, broke all the way to the sideline. Timeout on the field. We'll take a break and return to Bryant Denny in just a moment. Mark Saliba, and I'm the president and CEO of Alfred Saliba Corporation. As a part of the Home Builders Association of Alabama, I guess one of the best things that it's helped me with is personal development. It's helped me to learn how to, to be a, a better builder and a, and a better business person, but it's helped me in so many other ways and all the other roles that I have. How can you afford not to be a member of the Home Builders Association in your local area? There's power in the simplest of actions, like one neighbor helping another, where everybody looks out for everybody else. Community is everything to the electric cooperatives of Alabama, and we're grateful for your trust to provide the energy you need, giving you the power to power on. Your Alabama electric cooperatives, empowering lives, empowering communities. Sunbelt champion Troy meets Duke in the 76 Birmingham Bowl on December 23rd at Protective Stadium. Tickets are on sale now starting at just $30. Get tickets and more information at BirminghamBowl.com. Since 1997, Alabama Public Television has provided programs, services, and resources to child care professionals, teachers, and parents. Visit aptv.org slash education to learn more. I'm Todd Stacy, host of Capital Journal here on APT. Each week, we cover the stories that matter from your government, whether it's what's happening in the Alabama legislature or the latest from our congressional delegation in Washington, D.C. We bring Alabama's top leaders to you. Be sure to watch Capital Journal Friday nights at 7.30 and Sundays at noon here on Alabama Public Television. What a crazy start to the 7A state championship game. Three possessions here in this first quarter, three turnovers. Every drive, coach, has ended by turnover. Yeah, and you know, the thing you, you teach and, and preach to your, to your offenses is you want every series to end in a kick of some kind, preferably an extra point. But, you know, nothing bad happens if that happens. And like you said, we've had three turnovers in less than 10 minutes. I, I don't think anybody expected that. Anquan Fagan's the incredible interception there on the previous play. He had the pick that sealed the win over Hewitt Trustful for Thompson in the 7A semifinal round. So Thompson will take over, but in some poor field position back at their own seven yard line. But he'll, they'll take it after the interception and a big run up the middle here. First running play of the game so far for Thompson. A.J. Green, their leading runner this season averaging seven yards a carry coming into this game and he picks up about six there yeah he's, he's their thousand yard rusher and great great inside straight ahead runner Seaborn throws a strike out to the 20 yard line complete 
to Angel Jones. Yeah, this is really a nice throw. They clear out with the outside receiver and run a, run a little outcut uh, uh, for a nice gain and a big first down. And you see the kind of arm that that young man has right, right there. And of course, what an amazing story. The MVP of the state championship game is an eighth grader. And now here's a wily old veteran ninth grader back again. Second down. And run, or first down, I should say, run up the middle. Nets about three yards that time by Green. Let's go down to the field for more on Seaboard. Here's Christina. That's right, guys. One of the biggest things that coach talked about between last year's state championship game and this year is Trent's growth. Last year, he was about 5'9", 5'10", and weighed about 160 pounds. But this year, he's about 182 and about 6'1". So just goes to show the growth between him becoming a freshman this year. Coach says the biggest challenge for him is him becoming a leader. It's one of the things he talked about at the beginning of the season. And he says all each week he's grown and developed as a leader and become more vocal. And you can see that out on the field. And a big play here. Angel Jones, second catch of the game. And it's a big one as he takes it to the central 45-yard line as Thompson converts on third and short. Well, it was just a matter of time until they got to this RPO game. And, and, and you can see that's the run-pass option. They've been running the ball inside with Green. That time pulled it out, hit the slant right, right there. And you can see how quick a release that young man has. Seaborn off to a very good start. Six of seven. And this pass incomplete over the head of the intended receiver, senior Colby Hearn, who I think there's some kind of mix up there between receiver and quarterback. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Hearn set it down and Seaborn thought he was going to run that little seam route between the corner and the safety and into that little sugar spot. But as you said, they miscommunicated and it went for naught. Seaborn, six of seven, 51 yards here in the first quarter with the one interception. Second down and 10. He drops back to throw here. Little pump fake. Steps up, and he's going to be taken down behind the line of scrimmage. The pocket collapsing around him, and a nice play there by Central's Tristan Lyles. Yeah, Lyles has had 12 sacks on the year, and that time did a really nice job of retracing his steps, coming off that block back to the inside, and got the sack. Creates a third and 11 for Thompson. Red Devils rush four. They try to set up a little screen pass. Almost picked again, but coach, we may be seeing a possession in with a possible punt here. Well, well, but that was almost well, another turnover. That, that would be a rarity for tonight. They, they tried to run that little tunnel screen. Uh, had a hard time getting it over the top of that rush. and. A little bit high and almost interception number four, but not quite. And that will send on the punting unit for Thompson. John McGuire, John McGuire on the punt. He averages about 42 yards a punt. And he's been pretty good this year, dropping him inside of the 22. So we'll see what happens here. And Briggs Cameron standing back at the 10-yard line awaiting the kick. High kick here. Hits at the 20. Takes a little bit of a Thompson roll inside the 15-yard line. Well, I believe that's called flipping the field. Thompson downs the ball at the central 14-yard line. And here's a look at the past 7-7A seven, seven state champions. We talk about Thompson in the four in a row. The last time Thompson lost in the playoffs was to this central Phoenix City team back in 2018. Then after that, remember that Hoover team? <laughs> I, I, I seem I seem to and, and uh, you know, of course, it shows you the strength of that over the mountain area in, in, in Jefferson County uh, that has, has really dominated with a couple of exceptions 7 a football in this state for the last 10 years. So now the Red Devils start with poor field position inside their 15 here is the first carry of the night for Tristan Williams who comes in averaging right at 12 yards a carry over 700 yards rushing this season he picks up nine yards on that first down took he's part of that one two punch that, that you know that, that uh, they have in that backfield a little, a little more of the speed guy in that in that tandem you like second and one as a coach don't you uh, you can do a lot of things with second and one 
Let's see what Central Phoenix City decides to do here. Play clock down to five. Alfred leaves it with Williams. Nice hole on the right side, and he surges forward for a Central Phoenix City first down out to the 32. Really nice vision that time by, by Williams. That's the inside zone. He sees that backside cut. You'll watch right here. You can see him work back to his right side right there, hugs that block just like you're supposed to, and picks up a nice first thing. So first down at the 32. As we are now under two minutes to play in the first quarter of the 7A state championship game. Alford, little play fake on first down. Pass is caught at the 40. This is Coleman. Boy, that was double coverage that time on Coleman, and Alford delivered a strike. You know, I know he's had the uh, couple of picks, but he's thrown some impressive balls, too, tonight. That one, again, was right on the money. Of course, Cam Coleman has been committed to Texas A&M since June, and just this past Friday, Flipped his commitment to Hugh Freeze and the Auburn Tigers, setting up a pretty good wide receiver class down on the plains that Coleman just recently joined. First and 10 at the 48. Delayed or fake to Williams over the middle. Wide open is Dylan Gentry. And that'll be another first down. Well, the play fake right there really held the linebacker to the weak side inside. And you can see there's going to be a void. You look at the right top of your screen, you can see that linebacker is just sitting on playing that run. And they sneak that little curl right to the inside. Uh, and Gentry knew exactly what to do with it. And Central's got something going. They sure do. First down at the Thompson 27. Williams gets the call. And broke through the initial attempt to tackle that time. Now, what's been different in this drive so far up front, which I think is really, really crucial in this game, you don't see those black jerseys leaking through those, those gaps like you did in earlier drives. Uh, if Central can continue to do that, it's going to make, make things much more difficult for that uh, Thompson defense. Thompson will try to get back in that penetrating uh, look that they had and try to disrupt this offense. Second down and six. What could be the final play of the quarter? Alford fakes, looks. And pass is caught by Coleman. Coleman put his foot in the ground, made a nice cut, and Alford, you tell these two have worked very well together as Central Phoenix City has invaded the Children's of Alabama Red Zone. Yeah, that, that's that's a little punch and pivot move is one of the names they use that in the trade. He, he worked inside, got the defender to flip his hips, pivoted it off that inside foot, and snapped it back outside, and the ball was right on the money. First down at the 14. Probably wasn't the first time they've thrown that route. No, you year. can tell that. They've been working on that for quite a while. I would say in June, uh, when it was really hot, they were throwing that thing a bunch. As Coach Nix wants a big timeout, ran down there, saw something he didn't like. 11 seconds remaining in the first quarter. We will keep it here. And this timeout presented by the Alabama Natural Gas Association is head coach Patrick Nix, who, you know, won a couple of state championships at Pinson Valley, back-to-back yes. -back state titles in 2017 and 18, trying to pick up another one here against the juggernaut called Thompson. Well, you know, had a, had a long career as a, as a college coach, very successful offensive coordinator. Uh, got tired, I think, of the grind and moving all over the place and got into high school coaching and has had just tremendous success wherever he's been and uh, has a, a great football team this year. And as you said, had two back-to-back -back state championships at, uh, at Pinson Valley. Seem to remember he had a pretty good quarterback there. I can't remember the, the guy's name, but... Uh, yeah, and his son, Bo, just named a finalist for the Heisman. Yes, yes. You mentioned he's been... Uh, a challenging schedule, not only uh, obviously his duties coaching Central Phoenix City, but also keeping up with his son Bo up in Oregon. Yeah, he's, I think he's he, he's done as good a job as a dad as he has as a coach, I think. Susan, what do you uh, have to add to this? I know you know a little bit about Patrick Nix and his story. Awesome. Thanks, Susan. 
Here's the handoff to Williams. Williams inside the 10, stays on his feet inside the five. It's going to be first and goal for Central Phoenix City when we begin the second quarter. Well, uh, actually one second left. Well, that was a great run right there. I thought I thought Vince Pyres had him uh, you know, at the line of scrimmage, but he ran right through that, that leg tackle. And it has Central knocking on the door. And now they're set for play and run that second off. And our first quarter is in the books. No score in the 7A state championship game, but Central Phoenix City knocking on the door. First and goal when we come back to Bryant Denny Stadium. As championship season is upon us, one question to ask yourself is what team is my lawyer on? Every lawyer at our law firm is a graduate of the University of Georgia School of Law, the number one law school in Georgia, and one of the top 20 law schools in America. But the vast majority of personal injury lawyers, especially these folks you see on TV, could not get into the University of Georgia School of Law if their lives depended on it. So remember, if you want championship level legal representation and you're not at fault, call Briot. Um, Stacy, man, I've been waiting for you about 15 minutes. Hey. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be late. I'm trying to handle something on this app for my taxes. Oh, an uh, app? Yeah, some, yeah, app. I'm doing Why are you using that app? Uh, app to try to do your taxes? Doing that stuff yourself, man, you never know about the tax law, these new administration, and uh, you'd probably be paying more money through the government by missing some or, you know, just because you don't know what's going on. So you're taking a chance by even trying to do it yourself in the first place. Don't. Don't think like charge a lot. Man, look, the rest of these folks out here trying to knock y'all head off. Tax now got reasonable rates and they ain't trying to you know, do nobody wrong and they've been doing taxes for like forever. So that's need to holler. Oh, so I need a professional. You need a professional. All right. Tax put that app stuff away. Leave that stuff alone and bop with somebody who know what the hell they doing, okay? okay? Oh, good. I will. I will Tell them T Flow sent you. Coach T Flow. Okay, I got All right, you. Now bring your buddy in so we can get this work. <sighs> Nickname the Amazing. A major underdog entering the season, we finished with a 10-1 record, number five in the country, including the infamous Punt Bama Punt Iron Bowl victory. Coach always said that his 1972 team was one of his favorites. Coach Jordan remains one of the most highly respected personalities in the history of Auburn University. Not only because of his success as a head football coach, but also because of his tireless devotion to the Auburn community. Back at Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa, home of the Alabama Crimson Tide, but for the next three days, home to the 28th annual AHSAA Super 7 State Championships. We're through one quarter of the 7A State Championship game. It is Central of Phoenix City beginning the second quarter with an opportunity to get some points on the scoreboard here. Williams stays in the game. He's been the running back this entire series. He gets the call, and Williams scores the first touchdown of the game for Central Phoenix City. Yeah, that's a great push by the left side of the uh, central offensive line. And boy, what a job that young man did in this series right here. That's his 11th touchdown of the season. And again, our first points of the night as Central strikes first. I don't think we mentioned this, but Williams does average a cool 11.8 yards a carry coming into this game. So he knows how to tote that man. You mentioned the one-two punch there with with he and Zach Simmons Brown. And here's the extra point attempt from Ethan Paul, the left footer. 63 of 66 on the season. Make it 64 of 67. And look at the crowd in attendance here tonight. Coach, looking back at this drive, we mentioned a lot of this was number 24 and the work done here by Williams. Yeah, you can see he breaks two tackles right there. Actually, almost breaks a third one. Just good straight-ahead power running. And then watch the left side of the offensive line cave it in right there. Really a nice job that time uh, by uh, Mal uh, Waldrop, a three-star player. And uh, Alabama, Clemson, Colorado, Auburn are all taking a good look at him. And... Uh, he had a bunch of pancakes coming into this game, and you saw there he just kind of caved in that. And time here to take a look at the Aldot 
drive safe scoring drive eight plays 86 yards Williams five carries 36 yards a long run of 12 yards and of course the touchdown well and I think you know they had one called back they they, they they kind of been out of rhythm a little bit I thought that was the first time really that that offense looked like it was in rhythm and kind of threw when they wanted to and were able to run the ball super effective and Ethan Paul on for the kickoff and Paul gets a leg into this one and it'll be fielded at the seven yard line and brought back out to the 25 yard line the return there by Thompson's Caleb Harris and now time to welcome in a special guest to the booth joining coach Rhodes and I Wesley Britt uh, the former Alabama Crimson Tide player also a former New England Patriot Wesley thanks for stopping in and spending some time with us here in the second quarter. It's great to be here it's great to watch 7A <laughs> Alabama high school football this is fantastic I think both teams came out hot throwing darts throwing it long going for the shots having turnovers then finally Central said hey let's take a step back let's evaluate who we are, what we got, we're bigger. Well, let's run play action. Let's get after it, short passes, and they put together a drive, and I think we'll see more of that the rest of the night. Big play there by Tristan Lyles of Wesley. Uh, I gotta ask, ask you this, when you come back into this stadium, still makes the hair back on the back of my neck stand up. Uh, you spent four great years here at the University of Alabama from 2000 to 2004. That's right, it was unbelievable. Looking back, just to have the chance to put that, wear that crimson jersey, there's so many history. It, it, just historic players, greats in NFL, college, and all the sports have played. And for me to be able to do that here in Brad Day Stadium, unbelievable. And we're seeing guys here tonight play that will also be wearing that jersey. And you see the pass from Seaborn over the head of Colby Hearn. So Thompson in a tough spot here, Coach, third and 13. Yeah, they really are. And, and uh, you know, a nice uh, penetrating defense on first down. Uh, we're able to disrupt uh, that last pass uh, attempt right there. Uh, right now, that momentum is uh, they, the, that momentum switch jerseys a lot. This this hat right now has got a white jersey on. Third and 13. Keep it on the ground. Nice job there, breaking tackles by AJ Green. Gets what he can out across the 25 and got a flag on the. know whether we got a mask or a horse collar this is good vision by green and good strength to watch him bounce outside get on the edge I think we might have a face mask right there a little hand on the on the mask Ooh. early may have grazed the face mask five yard face mask foul on the defense penalty is five yards That's added to the penalty. end of the run replay third down Big thing is they get to replay the down yep. third and three. Thompson will take advantage of these penalties. You got to play smart football. And here's the give to Green. He slips down. It looked like he was going to have the first down easily, but lost his footing, and they're going to spot him down at the 34, which leaves him a yard short of the first down. You watch right here. This is a little kick out block by big number 73 tries to make that inside cut and just loses his foot that's a big play for Central's defense to give the ball back to that offense which seems to kind of be clicking here I really I mean that is that's a huge stop that's basically a three and out and, and uh, Central is going to get the football right back barring something unforeseen here's John McGuire on the punt it's a lot of air under this one and a fair catch dropped oh. it is dropped by Briggs Cameron and Thompson recovers on the recovery I believe that was number 12 Dakota Murphy or make a correction that number 19 on the recovery Caleb Fox what a big turnover the fourth turnover of the wow. game well you know you mentioned something there that that's really very very important I mean this may be as high a kick as I've seen from a high school kicker in a long long time and you can see they're right tight inside and look at those elbows those elbows are, are out you want to try to make a funnel hands out elbows in 
Uh, but that was just the opposite. And when it went through the wicket, there was no place to recover it. So instead of Central getting the ball back to their offense, who seemed to be clicking, now Thompson gets it back. Seaborn goes for the home run, and it's incomplete down around the goal line. It was intended for Colbin Landrew, but well defended by Monterius Eccles. Well, this really is a great job by Eccles. I mean, he is what is called in the trade out of phase. He's, he's he's trailing the play and watch him get up and get those hands in between the receivers exactly the way you teach it and knocks that ball away. Wesley, you like going for the home run there on first down? I think it's a good opportunity to take a shot. You had you had a quick change in momentum of the game. Take the shot and see let's see what turns out. Second and ten, Seaborn. Dumps it over the middle, pass is dropped to the 33 yard line. Boy, you got to help out your quarterback there, but Angel Jones, who's had, got a couple of catches in the game so far, couldn't hold on there. Yeah, the, you know, it ran that little shallow cross, and that's not as easy a, a, a catch as you think it would be from the stands. That ball comes out of a lot of helmets and jerseys and all that. It looked like Jones kind of got his hands, couldn't quite get them right, and the result is an incomplete pass. Seaborn started the game hot. Hasn't had a completion in a while. He's 6 of 11 so far. He goes deep here toward the end zone, and it is incomplete. It, once again, it was number four and number four hooking up back there as Landry was the intended receiver, but Eccles right there step for step. Yeah, went, went back with the fade route again, and really pretty, again, a, a difficult throw and uh, not much room to work with it on the sideline right there. And a good job by that young man right there. And while I like the, sh the shot on the turnover, you can't do that consistently. You have to establish the run game. You have to get some play action. So fourth and 10, Thompson will go for it here inside the central 35. Seaborn's pass is complete. Going to be short of the first down. It's a nice job defensively by Jaquan Sanks, the senior defensive back, making the play. Yeah, ran a little bunch, a, a wide bunch route right here. One guy in, one guy deep, and then the little turnout route right there. But a good job of, uh, of knowing the down and distance and where the sticks were and made the sure tackle and... Uh, Got the turnover. Wesley, do you sense that Central's running game is starting to get going here with this offensive line? Without a doubt. They're starting to lean on them, and you can see that on Thompson. You can see them start to open holes, that, especially that left side, that big left tackle. He has a good, quick first step, and he's just and he's been able to dominate so far. There, there you see it again. This is Simmons Brown back in the game. Yeah, you, you know, we talked a little bit uh, when we were just talking before the game about, you know, you had, you had done a kind of a little a little research of the big guys on one side and not so big on the other. Tell us a little bit about that, you know, that, that, right. that size difference. Everybody seems to look at the speedy guys and how many reception yards. I look at the weight. What, what are their now, what size? Is, what kind of beat? That? Hey, right. hey Wes, Wesley came in with his roster. That. That's right. Yeah, he was going down the way. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and, you look, and you look at that, you got 10 guys that are probably averaging close to 300 on Central, and you look at Thompson, you go back to the other side, and you have one guy over 255 pounds. Yeah. One he, person on the team. He came in and said, when they got 15 guys, their average weight is 298.63. <laughs> I mean, not that he was being exact or anything. I mean, right. But, no, I mean, and as the game goes on, you know, that size differential becomes more and more important. Pretty good job that time by Thompson of forcing offered out of the out of the pocket but most games are won there aren't that's they? that's right most games are in the trenches and uh and as this go game goes along if you're not scoring mm -hmm. on these long drives if you're not putting points on the board it's the it's the team that can put together a 12 pet play sustained drive to win a football game well and, and i mean the, the ability to finish drives in championship game is just just crucial i mean you can't let opportunities go by the board and you know you kind of wonder I mean uh, you know Central already has had one score called back you know how that's going to play as it as it goes on and we have as championship season is upon us one question to ask yourself is what team is my lawyer on every lawyer at our law firm is a graduate of the University of Georgia School of Law the number one law school in Georgia and one of the top 20 law schools in America but the vast majority of personal injury lawyers especially these folks you see on TV could not get into the University of Georgia School of Law if their lives depended on it. So remember, if you want championship level legal representation and you're not at fault, call Briot. Um, Stacy, man, I've been waiting for you about 15 minutes. Hey, I'm 
sorry, I didn't mean to be late. I'm trying to handle something on this app for my taxes. Oh, an app? Yeah, some, yeah, app. I'm doing Why are you using an app, app. app to try to do your taxes? Doing that stuff yourself, man, you never know. About the tax law, these new administration, and you probably be paying more money through the government by missing some or, you know, just because you don't know what's going on. So you're taking a chance by even trying to do it yourself in the first place. Don't, 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 don't think like, charge a lot. Man, look. The rest of these folks out here trying to knock y'all head out. Tax now got reasonable rates, and they ain't trying to you know, do nobody wrong. And they've been doing taxes for like forever, so that we need to holler. At. Oh, so I need a professional. You need a professional now. All right. Tax put that app stuff away. Leave that stuff alone, and talk with somebody who know what the hell they doing. Okay. You know the path of this game is never easy, and this is no exception. Third and eight, offered to throw under heavy pressure. Throws it up for grabs, and it's grabbed by the player in the Thompson jersey, but the ball hits the ground. And let's see what the official ruling is. They're going to say incomplete at the 40-yard line. Well, you know, one thing that Thompson has been able to do is they've been able to cover that, that three-man set without having to bring their backside safety involved. So he is a true free safety in the middle of the field, and he's just playing, he's just playing center field. I mean, he's, 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 reading, he's reading off for his eyes. Both, Pretty good pop right there. On both teams, the defensive backs are too talented to throw up those 50-50 balls point. like that time after time. Well, and you can see right there, he, he literally looks like a baseball center fielder sitting back there. Looks like a guy that just goes back to the wall and robs someone of a home run. And just great range and a great, great uh, job by that young man. And here's Colin Freeberg, the junior punter, and it's blocked. It is blocked by Vinny Prairies. That's the second big play that he has made tonight. You may recall, number one, knocked the ball loose earlier that created a turnover for Thompson. And here, he makes the big play on special teams. Yeah, he's going to come right up the chute untouched. Uh, somebody missed an assignment in the middle, and I mean, he took it right off the foot. And, uh, boy, Thompson has had two huge plays now in the kicking game. Watch, watch coming right from the left of your screen. You can see he's virtually untouched by first the front line and also by the personal protector. So Thompson comes up with a huge special teams play, gives the ball right back to their offense, first and 10 at the Central 11. You know, guys, time to get this first reference out of the way. The last time Thompson was playing in this game in this stadium, we all remember what happened in that game against Auburn. What a crazy finish in that game well and special teams were huge and yes they and were that, and that uh, science fiction ending to that <laughs> game and uh, uh, they have been huge 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 tonight in the in the special teams and now what's important here is Thompson needs to get seven out of this yes and coach Freeman seems to think that this team reminds him of that 2021 team where nobody gives them a chance but they're but they won't die they won't go away and they keep stepping up to the plate well, you know, as you okay, well guys, know, Wesley, okay, you know, okay, you know, okay. Success success. Make sure if you are watching you know, the stream, do not be a ghost a, watcher. A All thing we're asking for is a donation, whether that's one dollar, you know, five dollar, ten dollars, twenty dollars. Make sure you make a donation to keep the stream up. We're going to analyze um, the first half of play. If everything is all good, we will continue to stream. But if we don't get no donations in, we will shut down the stream to only our subscribers. So we can't shut it down if you're not a subscriber. And you can't subscribe while the, the live is going on. What it will let you do is after after the live is over, it'll let you subscribe to see the live. So if you're already a subscriber, and um, once we go black, if, if we go black, if we don't get enough donations to cover this screen, we will go black. And we go black, only our subscribers will be able to watch the game. If we don't have to subscribe, you cannot watch the game during um, Wise Live if you need to subscribe. So, guys, make sure you support the channel. We're doing this for you. You're at the comfort of your own home. People who paid to go see the game, they paid $12, whatever. To watch it, you at home, you can donate five dollars to the channel. On the field goal unit, John McGuire, who's five of five on the season on field goals, will try to put Thompson on the scoreboard, and he does. So the Warriors are on the board. Central Phoenix City leads Thompson 7-3 midway through the second quarter. We'll return to Bryant Denny Stadium and our live coverage of the Super Seven Championships, presented by the Alabama Community Colleges.
change lives and achieve your professional goals with a rewarding career at the Alabama Department of Human Resources, the state's provider of social services in all 67 counties. Join our hardworking team that positively impacts the lives of children and families across Alabama. Speak to a recruiter by calling 334-242-1780 or emailing recruitment at dhr.alabama.gov. So I let my pad do the talk. I just say everybody run game nine this year. Song sound undersized, but I feel like a big dog. Even through trouble, what I stay 100. See, this year, I'm gonna shock the world. Sometimes you gotta switch your surroundings to show the world your talents. I'll be the first quarterback to throw for over 2,000 yards in my city. I don't do too much talking. See, I'm here. You got me one to one. Enough of the talking. It's showtime. So I let my pads do the talk. I just say everybody run game nine this year. Song sound undersized, but I feel like a big dog. Even through trouble, what I stay 100. See, this year, I'm gonna shock the world. Sometimes you gotta switch your surroundings to show the world your talents. I'll be the first quarterback to throw for over 2,000 yards in my city. Television, Mickey Shadrick, Coach Rick Rhodes, and also former Tide and NFL star Wesley Britt joining us. And hang with us to the end of the second quarter, right? Love him being here. All right, we're going to keep you here. There you see Coach Pat Nix, his team with a 7-3 lead. But I think we all agree Mark Freeman coach of Thompson made the right call there to get points in that situation. You've got to take the points while you can, uh, especially this early in the game because at the, at the end of the game th that's going to be something that separates the winner from the loser. Well, I, I think you don't want to come out of there with with, uh, with nothing. And so you're on the board, you know, you got a little momentum. One stat that's really interesting from this first quarter, Thompson uh, has 25 yards rushing. A.J. Green, uh, you know, their, their stout ball carrier is averaging only 2.9 yards a carry. That is well off of his season average, uh, for sure. And this kick skids into the end zone, so it'll be a touchback. And Central Phoenix City will take back over on offense with just under seven minutes to play here in the first half. Coach, let's go down to Christina on the field. that punt and coach says it's a joy to have him back on the field back in October he had emergency surgery for appendicitis he woke up in the middle of the night went in for surgery he missed five weeks and didn't join the team back until the playoffs coach says when he's on the field you can sense his energy and he's electric coming up with big plays like the block punt Great job, Christina. Appreciate that. That's great insight there, and a big play there as Williams is back in the game. And I tell you what, he's the he's the big playmaker in this game so far. Well, this is the, the zone. It really does a nice job of pressing that off tackle hole and then bouncing that thing outside and showing pretty good speed once he got out there. Williams, a very good first half. And again, he does average 11.8 yards a carry, which in most leagues is pretty darn good. Six carries up to 69 yards and averaging 11 and a half yards a carry in this game so far. And they give it to him again, Williams. Nice patience, gets a little push from behind and he's inside the 45 yard line for a gain of, we'll call it a three yard gain on first down. You hit the nail right on the head, Mickey. He was very patient right there, stayed behind his blocker as long as he could, and then was able to bounce that thing inside. 
That's the kind of running back that offensive linemen love to block for. Somebody that's going to fight for that extra half yard is going to give them everything they got and stay behind you and trust your offensive linemen. And he did a good job of setting that block, those blocks up. You know, didn't run into a tackle, gave those big guys a chance to, to roll the pile on the go. Second and seven. Back to Williams again. Cut off his feet at the 43-yard line. Nice tackle there made by... Thompson's Tyler Hicks, the senior linebacker, going to set up a third down and five. You know, one of the things that's that's so different about being a linebacker in modern football is you got to be able to play out of the box and read an offensive scheme well enough to get in the box in a hurry. And that time, a really, really good job by that young man. So big play here for the central offense. Third and five as they try to keep the drive alive. Fake to Williams. Alford puts it in the air, and the pass is incomplete down at the 33-yard line. It was intended for Coleman. Good coverage, though, that time by Jaden Brown of Thompson. Yeah, it really was. Tried to do that little punch and pivot route that they hit in the, in the first quarter, but no separation that time. A really, really nice job by that young man right there. So, Wesley, here's another fourth down. What do you do here? <laughs> you know, with the score being up 7-3, I think, I would I would personally punt it, but with their firepower scoring 44 a game, punt it. I can't argue that he's going for it at this field position. They're going for hey, it. a true broadcaster, I'm going for it every time. It's easy to say, right? <laughs> Come on, Here's Andrew. Takes a hand off, takes a shot. The pass is, the pass is complete. That's a first, first down central. They be moving those chains. They ain't rocking it right. CGY Dylan Sports had to come in there, show them boys how to the broadcast. The them boys talking about some other issues. Talk about the game, man. Turn up. Turn in come on, Central. That's a nice job of catching that ball off his back, backside shoulder. Watch him. He's going to be moving to his right. The ball slightly behind him. He just plucks that thing right off his back shoulder. Great that's catch. That's not nearly as easy as he made it look. Coach, I would say he made the right call in going for that. <laughs> And back to Williams, and why not? Well, this young man's going to work course in the first line. half as he is knocking on the door of 100 yards left rushing in, in this first half. By the way, Alfred half, is now quarter. over 100 yards passing, 6 Spencer. for 10 after that previous yeah, pass for 115 yards. <laughs> you know, he's Spencer made some impressive throws three. with the exception of, of those interceptions. And he's thrown some, some great balls. Number two game for our double hitter today. We had the Muskogee County Middle Second School Championship. Central with Richard Woods, Slaughterhouse points the Midland on Jaguars. The drive. Now we got the home team, Central Getting Red Devils, going against the Thompson Warriors. Hands off to Williams. Right Williams. Punch it. There you go. Outside. There you go. First down and more. Ducks Get on up through. They try, they try to script that ball. They are trying to script that ball. First they already scripted one earlier. For Central Phoenix City. And Central back in the Children's of Alabama red zone with a first and goal. And I don't know whether that was a predetermined counter or just a really good job of vision and patience. And I think it was vision and patience. He He's been outside. following behind his them bigs the whole series of downs. This is another example of putting together a drive. Yes. Yeah. You're not seeing the 25-yard plus. You're seeing the drives. Here's Williams. Up the, up the gut, he's still on his feet. Touchdown, and Central. The Put the bun in the oven. Of the night. Well, the problem that, that Thompson has right now is they're having to play with, you know, three down linemen and a single linebacker in the box and count on those edge guys, to, you know, to work outside in. Yeah, because they double team and camp. quick enough and there's enough daylight in a hurry, they just can't get back in there quick enough. And that young man right there, you know, has made it a very, very difficult job for those outside linebackers to get back inside quickly enough. Okay, Central's up Here's 13 Ethan to Paul zero to, attempt the extra to three, point. excuse me. Good snap, good hold. 14 good to three. And Central does have three minutes left in the, the first half. As they extend their lead to whole team is up. Three is. Williams having a huge first half. He is over 100 yards rushing. On 11 carries, 101 yards, two touchdowns, which two tutties. gives him 12 on the season. And Wesley, we got to give credit to the big guys up front because they're working the, it putting in tandem. the work here. The hog, big hogs are putting in the work, and they're and they're starting they're starting to have an effect on this game. And I think this will continue to be the story. Well, he's done a really good job of using those blockers to his advantage. You, you saw a little bit of everything there. Break breaks tackles inside. You know, gives a little dip to the inside, shows good speed to the outside. I mean, uh, he's been very, very complete. 
on, on this uh, on this very very good second quarter so far for for uh, Central Wesley you've been talking about drives check out the Al dot safe drive there eight plays 80 yards that's that's good that's solid that, that's that, solid it, it really is I think they found the formula they'll continue to display action at, at some point Thompson is going to move more more defenders into the box and then here comes your shots it opens up the long ball well you know when you could run the ball like that you end up throwing the football when you want to, not when you have to. And that's that's just a huge, huge difference. It's a good place to be. By the way, coming up at halftime, we will send it back down to the field and join Kevin Skarbinski for our halftime show live here at the 7A state championship game. So stay with us here on Alabama Public Television. This kickoff filled it inside the 10-yard line. Look out. Here comes a big return. This is Thompson's Caleb Harris. Boy, Thompson needed that, and they get a big return across the 50-yard line as they'll start this possession. First down at the Central 46. I tell you, at this to this point, to this point, Thompson's kicking game has kept them in the game. You can see this is right up the right sideline. You can see pretty good job of caving in and kicking out. Black shots, black shirts cover those white shirts and. Great field position for the Thompson Warriors. Caleb Harris has been the heart and soul of that defense, so I'm glad to see he's making an impact now on special teams. You know, this Thompson team trailed Hewitt Trustful 10 to nothing midway through the second quarter of the 7A semifinal game to come back and win that game 21 to 10. And here they face a 14 to 3 deficit here late in the first half, but they do have time here to score before halftime. Well, and once again, you know, A.J. Green, the, the, the really, really good running back for Thompson. Pretty much held in check. Only one yard on that inside run right there. Second and nine, Seaborn escapes the pocket. Eyes downfield. Now he'll just take off and run. And nice job by Seaborn picking up some positive yardage before stepping out of bounds at around the 43-yard line. Yeah, tried to run another combination route to, to the wide side of the field. Nothing there, but was able to get outside of contain and, and showed uh, pretty good speed as he went down that side. And, Coach, how a mature of a play was that for a freshman quarterback to get what he can and get out of bounds? You know, you can just throw everything about eighth and ninth grade out, out the window with this young man right here. I mean, he is so far... Uh, beyond his years. I've really never seen anything quite Is it quite not like a him. unique combination of youth and experience on this 7A stage at the same time? Seaborn just kind of gets rid of this one. Yep. That uh, was a busted play. I, I, I think I jinxed him all the way on that yep. one because somebody went the wrong way. There was no receiver in the area, and he wisely just got rid of the football. Mm -hmm. and, it, and he opened up for the handoff to the yes. right, and the yes. running back ran on his back to the left. Fourth and one at the Central 37. Yeah. I don't think there's any doubt they're going to go here. I, I think they pretty much need to. You know, you know, Seaburn's kind of an interesting guy. Of course, he's. I think he's. I think he's from Hawaii originally. They were in Colorado for a while, but uh, if, you, if you look at his highlights right there, you're going to see him jump up in the in the stands with a band, still in his football uniform, and this this guy can play a pretty good sax. Let me tell you. He didn't have that little one either. He had that big one. You know, what, is it, what do they call that? I don't know, the base. I don't know anything about saxophones. But, I mean, he was grooving with it, I'm telling you. So he, he's a very, very talented young man. And, of course, you know, a, a, a really a generational talent. And with more on Seaborn, let's head back down to the field and uh, hear from Christina. That's right. Well, Trent, obviously talking about his many talents, he can play the saxophone. A lot of times after practice, he will join the band that plays at basketball games. But one of the most interesting things that coach told me was he can do a Rubik's Cube in 90 seconds. He's always has a Rubik's Cube in his hands walking down the hallways. So you're talking about a talented quarterback who has many talents, whether it's playing the saxophone or doing a Rubik's Cube in 60 seconds. I asked coach if he can do that, and he's Said, no, it makes his head hurt. <laughs> Thanks, Christina. Yeah, he's uh, he's definitely uh, way ahead of his years here. I mean, again, just a ninth grader. It's it's hard to get past that when you think about it. You know, last year he wasn't the starter, beginning of the year, came on and led them to a state championship. Here it is his job, and is his job. It appears to be for a while. And young man has just done a great job at such a young age and here on fourth and short Thompson's going to pick up a huge first down and that was very hard running there by A.J. Green. Yeah for a minute it looked like he was going to be stopped a little bit short and he just powered his way 
worked a little bit to the outside. Watch him right here. It looks like he's going to be stymied. Watch him roll to the outside, lower that shoulder, and pick up a big, big first down. 218 and counting here in the first half. First and 10 at the central 33. Seaborn hands it off again and green not much there that was just great job coming up from the secondary there by Monterius Eccles nice job by green though to dip it outside and pick up a pick up a couple just you know again the feeling that you have is that Thompson has just not been able to establish the kind of rhythm uh, that they want to against this uh, central defense that has proven to be pretty stingy to this point Only 100 yards of total offense here in this first half for Thompson. Now Green, a big run here as he picks up the first down and just short of the 20-yard line. Good blocking there, Wesley. Had a Good big block. hole to run through. Yeah, absolutely. And this is a defense, too, that's had 39 sacks this year. You got two D1 caliber commits, all, people with offers on this defense line, and Thompson's handling them. They're doing a great job. Pretty nice job that time by Gabriel Binion, the, the H back to. Yeah, I'm reading these comments too. Everybody was talking that shit on comments. Get what? Yeah, out of here. I'm not playing about ghost followers. Too many people watching for free. Appreciate everybody who has donated. I'm going through the comments. If you popping that shit, you out of here. Skorbinski will take over and have the halftime show for for you, and then we'll obviously. It's like we're setting up for a pretty good second half here in the 7A state championship game. You know, it's, it's interesting. Both these teams, you know, have, have really, I mean, glamorous quarterbacks. They have great receiving cores. But championship football always gets down to one thing. Who can run the football? And uh, if you can't run the football in championship play, you're going to have a hard time winning. If you, if you look at the drives that both teams have had, they have been run-oriented first. When you can run the football, you can put up those kind of numbers in the passing game. There's a look at the quarterback comparison coming in to tonight's game. Both both young men have had great seasons. Of course, Alford and Central Phoenix City, the top scoring team in 7A this year. Alford, what a season he has had. Well, 25 touchdowns is, is just outstanding. 44 touchdowns in a season is, is just really remarkable. Over 2,300 yards, and the 2,300 yards for Seaburn, which is impressive, but 3,300 yards on the other side is just incredible. Only two interceptions against those 44 touchdowns. So first and 10, Thompson. And Green. Football, Football. stripped out of there mm. by number 45, Brennan Core, the sophomore linebacker. I tell you, that was just a great heads-up play by Core there as he clearly saw the ball and just reached right in and took it away. Yeah, you can see that, you know, this this play is pretty well defended right here. The play is, is just about over. Watch him rip that ball out with that right hand and Johnny on the spot uh, right there. And I guarantee you, uh, that's not the first time that uh, that's been done by that central defense. I bet they've done it thousands of times in practice. Just a great, great defensive turnover. Great effort, man! What a big play! That was a huge play. Going yes. in to have a chance to get points on the points on the board. Look out for half. And a big running play here for Zach Simmons Brown. That's his biggest rush of the night so far. He's pretty much been kept in check till that play. But we do have a flag back at the 24, so this is coming back with a holding call. I think we'll look back on that turnover as the most influential play of the yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, an asterisk yeah. play. Yeah. I mean, that's a big play. It is the biggest play of the game to this point. No yeah. doubt about it. That's at least a Holy potential seven points. Offense. Could be more. At least 10 yards from the spot. And that's a big foul. penalty right there, Replay too. First and not to mention the momentum, the feeling, yes. the psychology when you go in, a high school athletes go into the locker room for halftime. Yeah, I think we saw the, the hole there by number 10, Jacob Tenney, right there. So they'll bring it back and spot it inside the 15. So that's about a 53-yard penalty. Mm. So first and 18. The clock continues to count down here in the first half. 
You want to be careful here if, if you're central. You certainly want to <clears throat> try to get something going, but you don't want to turn this ball over deep in your own territory. Brown stopped after only a game of three. It looks like they're content on running the ball. Just run the clock. Let's get to half time with the lead. Yeah, you wonder if they'll take a shot here with to Coleman or one of the good receivers. And you know, those are, that receiving core has been pretty quiet to this point. Yeah, no question. Central is going to be content with a 14-3 lead here at halftime. Yep. Taking their time here. They're certainly in the driver's seat going back in the second half. Second and 14. Brown. Tackled after a gain of one third and long. And that will bring us to, we're going to get a timeout here by Thompson. Well, they would love to get another shot to see if they can block another one. Timeout, Thompson. Yes, sir. Final timeout. Well, you know, Thompson, we talked about that game the last time Thompson was here inside this stadium. That was the crazy finish against Auburn that they won 29 to 28 back in 2020. And that was a game that looked like it was it was Auburn's uh, all the way. And somehow, unfortunately, I have to say that, uh, you know, Game clock operator, please reset the game clock. Uh, and you know what's amazing? Seconds. What's amazing about that? 24 seconds. Is that because uh, everybody Thank in the stadium you. thought this game was over except except Thompson, and uh, this is the block kick that's gonna that's gonna start it right here. And there's some very unusual things about that that we don't have time to go into right now. But uh, certainly a great a great play by Thompson. There's the onside kick. And there's some unusual things about that one we don't have time to talk about, too. But a great job by, by Thompson of covering this. And then here's the first of the interference uh, calls, which legitimate calls. And then here's the, here's the streak down the middle. Hands on the back again. And here's the winning field goal. Now, here's what is so remarkable about this. How many yards of offense did Thompson gain in all that? Zero. Not one offensive yard was gained. It was all done by special teams and by penalties. And this is Brown taking it out across the 30. That'll actually be a first down. And I think you see Coach Freeman taking off the headsets. Yep. And I, I think both teams are going to be content to let the first half close out here. So he'll reset the change and start up the clock. And there we go. Both teams have gotten out of this first half with some pretty remarkable mistakes of the turnovers and some mental errors. So the, I think both teams should be happy with where they are, but figuring out how to make those adjustments going in the second half should be crucial. No, I, Wesley, I think I think you're exactly right. It, it's been kind of a hasn't been a smooth going. And let's send it down to Susan Carruthers, who's standing by with Coach Nix. Hey, Coach, we knew this game was going to be a grind. Your team's in the driver's seat going into halftime. What do you adjust in the locker room to make sure you maintain this lead? I think, you know, obviously got to do a little bit better job tackling them. We didn't, we didn't tackle, I didn't think, great the first half. Um, they did a great job of having some different looks for us on offense. we got to be able to continue to run the football. I think it's going to be the key on offense and protect the football. You can't turn the ball over when we got down in the red zone. But thank goodness we got the turnover on them, so it balanced its way back out. Good luck, Coach. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks, Susan. Thompson, Central Phoenix City, 7A state championship game. Red Devils head to the locker room with a 14-3 lead. And Wesley, thanks for stepping in and uh, spending some time with us here in the second quarter. It's unbelievable to be here. So proud to be here. And there's Clemson this, coach Dabo Swinney, Wesley. Uh, Dabo Swinney, who recruited me to the <laughs> University of Alabama. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that man. That's and great. He's like a father to me. That's awesome. Yeah, Wesley, thanks so much. And we'll be seeing Please you for the rest the of the week here at the Super 7. Minutes. And again, what Kevin Skarbinski coming up with your halftime report from down on the field as we go to break. What a first half for Williams. 101 yards rushing, two touchdowns. His team with a 14-3 lead. We all make choices about alcohol. Kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Yeah, have fun. Hey, uh, remind me about that party again. And adults make choices whether to talk about it. 
That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations, and they want honest answers in everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. This season, your football traditions and your holiday traditions team up. Fill your holidays with good cheer at the 76 Birmingham Bowl, December 23rd at Protective Stadium. Since 1997, Alabama Public Television has provided programs, services, and resources to child care professionals, teachers, and parents. Visit aptv.org slash education to learn more. Born in Fairfield, Alabama, Willie Mays is one of the greatest baseball players to ever play the game. In 22 major league seasons, mostly with the New York and later San Francisco Giants, Mays had a 302 lifetime batting average and amassed 3,283 hits, 660 home runs, and an untouchable total of 7,095 career putouts from the outfield. Mays was the National League Rookie of the Year in 1951 and played a significant role in the New York Giants World Series victory in 1954. The most memorable moment moment in Mays' career occurred in the first game of that series when he made a running over-the-shoulder catch at the warning track, popularly known as the catch. Mays earned two MVP awards, was awarded 12 gold gloves, made 24 all-star game appearances, and was a first ballot Hall of Fame inductee in 1979. In 2015, President Barack Obama awarded Mays a Presidential Medal of Freedom. Welcome back to Brian Denny Stadium. We are at halftime of the Class 7A state championship game. The drive for five is in jeopardy. Thompson High School trying to win its fifth straight state championship, trailing Central Phoenix City 14 to three. It has been a festival of turnovers so far through the first half of this game. Fumbles, interceptions, a blocked punt, and lots and lots of defense has kept the score down, but Central Phoenix City looks really strong. Its running game has been very effective. They've been able to punch it into the end zone twice. Thompson has not, and they were only able to turn a blocked field goal into a, a blocked punt into a field goal, hence the score 14 to three, Central Phoenix City. None of what happens here this week happens without the support, the generosity of so many supporters, so many sponsors, and one of the core foundation sponsors of Alabama High School Athletics is Encore Rehabilitation. We're pleased to be joined by the CEO, Paul Henderson. Paul, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Paul, this is, how much fun is it just for you to be involved and for Encore to be involved year in and year out, month in and month out, helping to keep these athletes healthy and really supporting high school athletics throughout the state of Alabama. Yeah. Well, it's a lot of fun. You know, this is our 20th year. And so we've seen the uh, state championships grow, not only in numbers, but in a lot of different sports. And Encore's there with every one of them to be sure if, if they need us, we're there, if the injuries occur, we're there to help. Let everyone know exactly what Encore does because you know I know personally the trainers the physical therapy all the different services that you provide but how do you work with the AHSAA to make sure as you said to keep those athletes healthy yeah well the Encore our, our company we're a rehabilitation company Alabama and Tennessee and Mississippi and uh, we hit, do physical therapy athletic training occupational therapy speech therapy uh, we cover about 250 high schools and colleges in those states, and we have athletic trainers there for uh, around the year for every sport. And with the High School Association, you know, we're, we're able to, wherever the state tournament is, for whatever sport, we'll have some athletic trainers there. And then we do some other things throughout the year with Alabama High School Athletic Association to show our support. You're talking about a lot of high schools, oh, a yes. lot of events. How many athletic trainers work with you through Encore? We probably have uh, close to 250 
athletic trainers and then uh, several physical therapists. And so we kind of uh, are there when the injury occurs. You work with a lot of physicians over those states. And then once uh, they go through uh, their uh, surgery or uh, through the doctor, then we see them for the rehabilitation with the uh, goal of getting them back on the field as quickly as possible. Guys, get your donations athletic up. Trainers are kind of the I mean, it's, it's, I don't even want to say the number. We got almost a thousand well, people watching. Time. And I we mean, haven't even gotten $30 trainer, worth of donations. You know, you so gotta be willing to just be like this, I mean, it's so simple. Workouts. And then you got to be so there simple just to go like that and, and, and just mess and so everything up and just keep and it off because uh, I'm watching the game. I'm, I'm straight. And so, yes, <laughs> just like that. So I'm good. I mean, I, I, at this point, the $30 that I did get, I returned that back and I just cut the stream and just watch it myself. This is horrible. It's disrespectful. Um, I don't uh, understand why people have, Decatur if everybody gave a dollar, <laughs> how people think they so can just watch something for free, and I even want to help. Company. I see and some comments say I might like give me nothing. And so I mean, I don't understand uh, that. I'm really know what's wrong with people to just feel like they just don't have to do things like that, or don't want to. Like, I'm going to watch the game, and I'm not going to pay nothing. And then talk about the person who asked, like, I'm begging. If you know what I had to go through to get this stream up, it wasn't free to get this stream up. And to bring it to like you. So, um, uh, I imagine what, for the people who do support us yes, uh, and help yeah, us, we love you guys. But to the, the majority, I, uh, started, I mean, uh, I don't know what what, what challenge, kind of challenge you think this is. And um, I'm a troller too. I'm with 19, all the bullshit. So, so we can play uh, games. We've, uh, I didn't I didn't put like ten people off the screen. I like fucking shit up. So guys, if we don't get no more donations coming to the second half. This like event. I said, the stream and will be cut, guys, and it will be viewed by live um, subscribers only. We gotta go okay. to a break. Thank you so much Thank for you. everything that you do that Encore does. We're gonna go to a break. When we come back, we'll be so joined play by if y'all motherfucking want to. Halftime, Bryant Denny Stadium, Central Phoenix City, 14 to three. We'll be right back. It's how we learn, experience, and connect to the world. But all of that powerful information needs a really powerful home. A data center. Like this world-class facility we invested $600 million to build right here in Alabama. But keeping the world's information at your fingertips isn't all we do. Our data center supports thousands of jobs. We provide resources to our community and generate more than a billion dollars for the state economy. We're doing our part for a better Alabama because Alabama is our home too. There's power in the simplest of actions. Like one neighbor helping another. Where everybody looks out for everybody else. Community is everything to the electric cooperatives of Alabama, and we're grateful for your trust to provide the energy you need, giving you the power to power on. Your Alabama electric cooperatives, empowering lives, empowering communities. Are you ready to take your career to the next level? With Lawson State Community College's adult education program, you can earn your high school credential for free. You may be eligible upon graduation for two free courses that will assist in transitioning into post-secondary education, where you can choose from college transfer to career technical options. Take the first step towards a brighter future. Enroll in Lawson State Community College's adult education program today and discover the path to your dream career. Alabama Public Television is your place for quality educational services, free professional development for educators and child care providers, access to free curriculum, aligned videos, lesson plans, and instructional resources with PBS Learning Media, and all the PBS Kids programs parents know and trust. Learn something new every day with Alabama Public Television. Visit us at aptv.org slash education to learn more. Back here at Bryant Denny Stadium, halftime of the 7A state championship game. Central Phoenix City 14, Thompson 3. Can Thompson come back and win that fifth straight title? You want to see the second half. But first, we've got some special guests helping to make these kind of events happen. The Alabama Community College System, the president of Lurleen B. Wallace Community College, Dr. Brock Kelly. Yes, sir. And in between, Corey Bowling, the executive director of the Alabama Home Builders Foundation. 
One of the things that I've learned, guys, about the Alabama Community College system is just the breadth of programs that it offers, the people it touches in this state. Workforce development, so important. How have the two groups that you represent combined to help this state in that area? Well, I'll go ahead and get it started. I will yeah. say that uh, it, it's it's tough to quantify what the the impact is from the community college system across the state. Um, you know, we we are the one entity I believe that can touch a, a student all the way at elementary age to uh, create the awareness of what's in their community, and at the middle school age, create the exploration uh, for what's in their community, allow them to explore different types of careers, and then the high school level in the dual enrollment uh, realm, we can get them into our programs. Um, and then with Corey, uh, LBW partnered with the Home Builders Association, and we. We provided a uh, non-credit track for adult education, and uh, it was a tremendous success. And it's just the, the the spectrum that the community college of the people that we can touch is is endless. Corey, how does that work from your perspective? Well, we work with them uh, quite a bit. Uh, one of the ways we do it is we provide scholarships for individuals looking to go into the trades. Either they have a, a carpentry program down there, they're looking to start an electrical program as well. So we provide scholarships to individuals looking to go into those trades, whatever it may be, carpentry, masonry, whatever it is. Uh, so we work with the community colleges a lot as far as our scholarship program goes. How big is the need for skilled workers in those fields? Oh, it's, it's huge. Uh, I mean, the average age of a construction worker right now is about 50, 50 years old. But you know, it's not very old, but um, you know, the people coming in, uh, you know, for every four workers we lose, we only bring in one. So there's a huge need uh, for construction workers. And when people think of education, they don't necessarily think of, they think of taking English or math or science. But again, those skilled trades, obviously very, very important to the state, Brock. Oh, uh, absolutely. They are tremendously important, and they continue to be important. Um, I think the legislators see that. I think uh, the whole community sees that. And uh, from a community college uh, point of view, um, anytime that we can get our community on our campus to see what type of programs that we have to offer, I think that um, opens the eyes of our community. And um, no matter what, we're industry driven and we take what the industry tells us. We have advisory councils uh, that come in and say, hey, I think you should do this. I think this is working. Here's what we're seeing. This is the product you're putting out. And we take that advice and we transform what we're doing at the community college to meet the needs and put out a good product for industry. Corey, you talked about the need for younger people to bring them into this into mm -hmm. this mix. Is What is the breadth, though, of age range that we're talking about who take these type of classes? It's a, it's a wide range of, uh, of ages. I mean, so our scholarship committee this, this year, we meet in April. Uh, we had uh, somebody uh, apply for a scholarship that was 47 years old. So it could be one of those things. It's majority of them are college age students, obviously. Uh, but we will have individuals that, you know, maybe they're looking to provide a little bit better for their family. Uh, so they're looking to go into the community college system and, and, and learn a trade and uh, make a lot m more money for their family. Well, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you know, with, with everything that we have doing um, going on right now, we have what's called a Skills for Success program. Um, it's free for industry. It's free for the individual uh, that takes the courses. And we have a great placement rate uh, with uh, people who go through that course and get hired. Um, and that's what it's all about is we're trying to put people to work. The labor participation rate is something big that we always talk about in the community college system. And that's a huge uh, thing that we've got to focus on in here in the next few years uh, to be successful across the state and uh, put ourselves on the map nationwide uh, economically. Dr. Brock Kelly, Corey Bowling, thank you so much for what you're doing for the people of Alabama every single day. We've got to run to a break. We'll be right back here at Bryant Denny Stadium. I'm Todd Stacy, host of Capital Journal here on APT. Each week, we cover the stories that matter from your government. 
whether it's what's happening in the Alabama legislature or the latest from our congressional delegation in Washington, D.C. We bring Alabama's top leaders to you. Be sure to watch Capitol Journal Friday night at 7.30 and Sundays at noon here on Alabama Public Television. Everyone knows what the big man wants. Yep, bacon. Jack's is bringing a sleigh load of bacon to its southern favorites. There's the big BLT, chicken BLT, and our bacon double cheeseburger. It's a bacon wonderland out there. More, more, more. Are you an enthusiastic sports fan? Want to have fun and get in on the action? Heck yes, that'd be awesome. Have great attention to detail? Want to stay active? Definitely. Want to give back to the student athletes in your community? Obviously, yes. Then you'd make an excellent high school sports official. We need more officials in Alabama. Because with no high school officials, there are no high school sports. Sign up today at highschoolofficials.com. At halftime of the Class 7A championship game, the drive for five is in jeopardy. Jack Williams, Central Phoenix City looking very strong in the first half. They're up 14 to 3. Jack Williams from Alabama Public Television with us. And Jack, first of all, the folks from the Alabama Community College System that are helping to bring these broadcasts to people throughout the state of Alabama, how important is their support? Oh, it's it's invaluable. I mean, and and we sat down and thought we were natural partners. We're both statewide operations, and they go into the four corners of Alabama, just like Alabama Public Television, and we're thrilled to partner with the community colleges. It is amazing to me, again, the depth of and breadth of programs they offer, people they touch, dual enrollment for high school students. My sons took advantage of that, as so many high school yes, students yeah. do. A great offering, but again, the workforce it's development, workforce development with, with the home builders and we, we got we've had such great partners uh, this year with home builders rural electric uh al dot we it's just been amazing uh, uh alabama department of environmental management adem is a new uh a new underwriter this year we're incredibly grateful uh, for all of our underwriters, and we'll be mentioning more of them as the weekend goes along. So, well, you know, we're watching two great football teams right here, but it takes a team to put together a, a broadcast like this, an event like this, and certainly APT, you've assembled a pretty strong team. Well, our, uh, you know, the, the production staff is great. Our staff has done a great job. We've been working on this for months now, and they've done a great job putting this together, and I'm really grateful for my, for my colleagues that I work with that, that have helped get us a, get, get us here to get us across the finish line. So. And how cool is it at the far end zone in the first half, you've got Dabo Sweeney from Clemson. He's here watching. Carnell Williams from Auburn. He's here watching. Antonio Langham, who played at Alabama. He's now, he's now coaching at Miles College. I didn't know that until tonight. I, 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 and I was talking to Bo Nix in the, in the other end zone uh, after the, as the teams were going in. Bo so. Nix, who's going to be at the Heisman ceremony on Saturday night. We wish the best of luck to him as he he's one of the four finalists we don't know who's going to win we hope of course he brings it home and then we've had wesley bread on staff and in the uh, in the booth so does it get much better than this all right so. we're going to get out of here we're almost time for the second half of this 7a championship game can central phoenix city spring what would be considered an upset or can thompson come back come back with us here in bryant denny State is the best choice for my education. You can get a jump start on college by completing college credit while still in high school. Or get an associate degree in one of Jeff State's high demand career programs and start earning great pay right away. How about saving thousands in tuition by starting at Jefferson State, then transferring to a four year university? And with online classes and four convenient campuses, I can earn a degree around my schedule. Find your place at Jefferson State. Registration going on now. There's power in the simplest of actions, like one neighbor helping another, where everybody looks out for everybody else. Community is everything to the electric cooperatives of Alabama, and we're grateful for your trust to provide the energy you need, giving you the power to power on.
Your Alabama Electric Cooperatives. Empowering lives. Empowering communities. When driving, share the road, not a post. Bad. Alabama has a code of the road, and knowing it helps you follow it. This is a message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. When driving, wear a seatbelt, not a filter. What? Alabama has a code of the road, and knowing it helps you follow it. This is a message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. The Internet. It's how we learn, experience, and connect to the world. But all of that powerful information needs a really powerful home. A data center. Like this world-class facility we invested $600 million to build right here in Alabama. But keeping the world's information at your fingertips isn't all we do. Our data center supports thousands of jobs. We provide resources to our community and generate more than a billion dollars for the state economy. We're doing our part for a better Alabama because Alabama is our home too. And back to Bryant-Denny Stadium here on the campus. University of Alabama, home to the Super 7 this weekend. We are at halftime of the 7A state championship game. There you see our score, Central Phoenix City leading the four-time defending champions from Thompson High School 14-3 here at halftime. And the first half, Coach Rhodes, uh, really the story of the first half was the play of this young man, number 24, Tristan Williams. He came on uh, early in the first quarter and really was dominant. He has over 100 yards rushing here at halftime on just 11 carries. He has scored both of Central's touchdowns in the first half. Yeah, and he really has been the difference in the first half. 101 yards, 9.9 .9 yards a carry. A little off his season average of 11.6, but still pretty salty. And let's send it down to the field. Christina standing by with Coach Freeman. Coach, some costly turnovers in the first half. What do you need to do on offense to sustain drives and find that rhythm? I mean, first drive, we got a great drive going. It's a play we worked all week, and um, we, we don't make the right decision with football, and, and that stops the drive, and we go down here, we fumble in the, going in the red zone. I think it's a red zone fumble, and we got touchdown, you know, to Big Buddy going in. You know, we just got to go make plays and execute plays. I mean, you, we go in here look at the film, and it's, it's really, we got to get up. We can't let them go for it on fourth down. We got to make them pay for it when they go on fourth down and get the ball back. Um, it's nothing, you know, we just got to go make plays and, and trust what we did all week in practice. And, and, you know, that's all we can ask the guys to do. We had a good plan and we've got some stuff. We've got to go back to it, but, you know, just mix it up. They're, they're really tough to run the ball on, so we have to mix it up. But you, you've got to run the football this time of year. So we got to go create ways to run the football and take advantage of the opportunities when we have them. All right, Coach, thanks so much. Thank you. And Thompson did win the toss, so they deferred and will receive the ball to begin the second half. And, Coach, here's a look at the halftime numbers, and it's it's stunning that Thompson is sitting here 110 yards of total offense in the first half. And then when you consider all of the mistakes that Central made in the first half to still only have 110 yards and three points. Yeah, really, six unforced errors. If you, you, know, if, if you count, you know, the block punt, the muff punt, two fumbles, an interception, one TD called back. Uh, I mean, and to still be ahead 14 to three. Uh, and I think Coach Freeman hit the nail right on the head. And I, I think you could could hear the frustration in his voice right there because they just have not been able to get any kind of offensive rhythm. You see only 50 yards rushing, only 110 yards total offense. And, and as he said, this time of year, you've got to be able to run the football. You've got to be able to run it effectively and they just have not been able to able to do that. So uh, I'm sure it's a frustrated Thompson team right now, but uh, still a, a long, long way to go. This guy's been the story so far. Central has had a little more success rushing the football here in the first half, thanks in large part to the play of junior Tristan Williams. Again, 101 yards rushing in the first half and two touchdowns. And uh, he is been the spark plug for this Central Phoenix City team who is trying to complete the perfect season and knock off the four-time defending state champs. Well, you know, if you look at the rushing, you know, totals, but look at look at the stats. You know, Thompson's rushing for a, right at three yards a carry. Uh, Central of Phoenix City is 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 rushing for 6.2 yards a carry. That's double, and that's 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 huge in this game. And there's Coach Patrick Nix on the left and Mark Freeman on the right, both making their halftime adjustments. And we'll get set for what 
is going to be a really important series for Thompson. Again, they will receive the ball to start the second half. And, and down 14 to 3, it'll be a big opportunity for them to kind of get some momentum back right away in the second half. And to recap the road to the Super 7 for both of these teams. First off, for Central Phoenix City, they get by Auburn. Uh, in the second round, then again, we mentioned the uh, the tough game with Mary Montgomery. They went into that game undefeated. They had a great season. Congratulations to them. Best in school history. Central really had to fight to win that game 21 to 7. And Thompson had to fight to get here as well. Vestavia Hills is a very good team this year. They got by them 34 14. And then they actually trailed Hewitt Trustful 10 to nothing in the second quarter of their game in round three in the semifinals. And they did come back and win that game 21 to 10. So They've been in this spot before. Well, but this is this yeah. is going to be a tough road to hoe here in the second half. No, it, it, it will be. But I can tell you right now, both these teams both think there's no doubt that they're going to win this football game. I mean, there's a lot of confidence on both sides. You know, we learned we learned a long time ago not to ever count uh, Thompson out of a football game. And and uh, and Central knows that if they can clean their game up, they're going to be mighty, mighty tough to beat. So it, it's going to be a heck of a second half. Uh, the uh, the match of wits between uh, uh, Coach Freeman and uh, Coach Nix, that'll be a big part of this story as well, and here we go. And Ethan Paul to kick it off as we begin the second half. Short kick fielded at the 10-yard line. And a good return here. Caleb Harris, he's had a couple of good returns in the game already, and he brings this one out across the 40 to give Thompson good field position to start the first drive of the second half. Well, they kind of picked up right where they left off, at, you know, in winning decisively the kicking game. And there's no doubt that Thompson, you know, has made huge, huge plays uh, in their kicking game all day. And I think this first drive is really important. Uh, both these teams are going to make a statement as to how they're going to approach the second half right now. It's a very key part of this game. A.J. Green, the Thompson running back, held to only 43 yards on 14 carries as the central defense doing a good job keeping him in check. And they are going to sack Trent Seaborn on the first play of the second half. And this central Phoenix City defensive front coach, they are really solid. they got a couple of big-time college prospects on that defensive line. Yeah, they really do. I, I, Isaiah Faga right there, uh, three-star uh, three uh, uh, prospect that uh, Bama is courting very heavily. At nine sacks coming into this game and just added to that total. Second down. Seaborn dumps it off to Green out of the backfield, and he is ran out of bounds there by Monterius Eccles. And here's a th third down and long here for Thompson, so not quite exactly how they wanted to start this drive. Now, that little swing right out of the backfield again, just kind of a little check down, and uh, Central did a nice job of breaking up on it, and, and this is a big, big third down and 14. Red Devils rush four. Seaborn gets the pass away, and it is incomplete down at the 45-yard line. Once again, it seems like this young man, Monterius Eccles, has been involved in every pass play Thompson has tried tonight. He's done a good job in coverage. Yeah, he, he really has. There was a little back shoulder throw that uh, I don't I don't know. It looked like, again, they, they had their wires crossed just a little bit. I, I really don't know what kind of route that... Uh, that Landry was was running right there. He, he looked like he was running a streak route, and the ball was thrown off his back shoulder. Eccles just a junior also for Central Phoenix City. So right away, a three and out for Thompson after the good kick return by Caleb Harris, and it is a short kick and a fair catch called for and dropped again, and Thompson's recovered their second muff putt by Central of Phoenix City in this game. Well... You know, just to elaborate on, on, on what we talked about earlier, that ball is kicked extremely high. Uh, and, you know, you know, you're in a little bit different setting here now. I mean, the light structure here, the, you know, the upper decks, you know, you know, high school guys aren't used to seeing that. And you can see the Thompson guys, I mean, you know, I, I'm sure the returner can smell their breath. Uh, you know, they're that close to him. And, uh, again, the elbows are out and not in. And another huge, huge kicking game mistake by, by Central and... And that is a great Kay job by Thompson. That is Kayla Fox. There you see him. He's the long snapper getting down and recovering the muff punt. So Thompson gets that, another opportunity here. That was like a replay of the first half. Yes. 
So a pre-snap penalty here. Central saying it's against Thompson, and Thompson saying it's against Central. And we'll get the decisive word from Kirby Michaels. It looks like it's going to go against the uh, black shirts. Big penalty. Pre-snap penalties drive coaches crazy. And they absolutely do. Matter of fact, there's a lot of things in this game that'll drive coaches crazy. <laughs> so first and 15 for Thompson at the central 36. And we've got a shift by the one. central defensive front and creating some movement on that Thompson offensive line. False start. Offense. Five yards. First down. That's one of those, uh, if it was college or professional football, they would say illegal procedure by everybody on the offense but the center. Well, you get, you get a turnover, and now it's first and 20, and that's kind of the way the night has gone for, for Thompson tonight. Still in four-down territory. Seaborn looking to throw. Drifting backwards in trouble, just gets rid of it. Good coverage downfield. The defensive line of Central Phoenix City collapsing the pocket around Seaborn. Now, here's the significance of those two penalties right here. Instead of first and 10 in four down territory on the 30 yard line, now you've got a first and 20, obviously 10 yards further back, but that completely changes the mindset of that, of that defensive front. Watch them lay their ears back and just come and watch that pocket collapse. And very fortunate there that that wasn't another big, big minus yardage play. So second down at 20, Seaborn throws down the middle of the field. It's caught at the 20-yard line. Great adjustment by Colby Hearn. That is his first catch of the night, and it's a big one. It's a first down. Well, this is a seam route, and... Uh, you know, you send guys down both hash and throw opposite the deep coverage. The underneath coverage makes a fatal mistake as they stop and try to play from the ball back to the man instead of playing from the man back to the ball. Just a clutch, clutch throw and catch. And uh, Thompson picks up a big, big first down. They needed 20. They got 21. First down at the 18. Seaborn looks left, throws right, and it is caught for the touchdown. Going up to make the catch was Jaden Kelly Campbell. First time he's been targeted tonight. Well, th this is a nice throw to the outside where only the offensive man uh, can get to it. Nice job of high pointing the ball and bringing that thing in. You talk about two clutch plays by that young man right there and by the Thompson offense, and it has completely turned this game around. So here's John McGuire on to attempt the extra point. And right down the middle. How about that, Mickey? Wow. Did this game just flip in a hurry? championship pedigree of this Thompson Warrior football team showing up here to begin the second half. One thing we learned over the years, you just can't count these guys out. Here's the muff punt that got things going in Thompson's direction, and then here is Seaborn going down the middle of the field, that seam route that you talked about, caught there by Colby Hearn, and then the look left and the look right. Good coverage, too, but just great job by high-pointing that football by Jaden Kelly Campbell. And, and Campbell is not, is not the tallest guy in the world. He's, he's about 5'9", but he went up there and, and, it, and, as you said, got to the top of that ball and pulled it in uh, just like you practice it. And Monterius Eccles was right there in great coverage again. Yep. Well, when you get those kind of turnovers, you know, you've, you you want to turn them into seven. And the, the first muff punt, they, they got three out of, and this one they turned into a touchdown. And, boy, did this game change in a hurry. And Coach Nix's expression right there kind of kind of tells it all about where we are right now. There's the Aldot drive safe, scoring drive. Three plays, 31 yards. Again, the fumble punt setting it all up for Thompson as the Warriors have pulled 
to within 14 to 10. So here's the kick to Central. Great coverage here by Thompson. You can tell momentum has clearly shifted in the Warriors' favor. That ball came loose at the end, but the official, I think, is saying the play is ruled dead at the 11-yard line. Well, again, this is special teams that, uh, that, frankly, Thompson has just dominated. I mean, this is great coverage right here. Big hit right there. Tries to fight off the first one, but great pursuit right here. And, you know, muff, muff kicks, blocked kicks, and now great coverage, which uh, has Central operating from their own 10-yard line. Alford over the middle pass is completed the 22 yard line and the receiver taken down immediately on the reception that time Dalen Upshaw that is his third grab of the night another guy that's getting a lot of looks had 58 catches for over 1100 yards been relatively quiet tonight he came off that play fake and ran that little turn in route uh, for a very positive first down which is something frankly that the Red Devils really needed at that point. Andrew Alford getting his players set up for this first down, and it is a give right up the middle and a good run here by Zach Simmons Brown, who had 10 carries for 37 yards in that first half. And here he picks up 11 yards, so back-to-back -back first downs here for Central Phoenix City. And they're working that left side uh, uh, pretty consistently. Again, uh, Mal Waldrop, the 6'4", 290-pound uh, left tackle. They're going behind him on a pretty regular basis now. So Central Phoenix City quickly turns poor field position into pretty good field position out at the 33, and we're going to have a timeout taken here by Central Phoenix City. It is an Alabama Natural Gas Association timeout. It comes with 9.18 to play here in the third. You know, Mickey, I still feel like that, you know, again, using a boxing analogy, we, you know, we got two teams that are just jabbing and, and, and punching and just, you know, exchanging blows in the middle. Nobody can, you know, get those combinations set up. That, it's just very, very hard for either one of these teams to get in a consistent uh, offensive rhythm. And if if Thompson is able to come back and win this game, I think Central is going to really rue. You know, now it's up to six unforced errors that we have right here. Tough to win when you have that many mistakes. Well, we've got a pause in the action. Let's bring in Christina down on the field. Yeah, you saw Colvin Landrew with that touchdown catch on that last drive, and he is actually a basketball player. He has several offers from Auburn, Alabama. Coach says he's at least 6'5", and he's a the guy they go to for those jump balls, the 50-50 balls. He has really good hands, and he always finds the high point to the ball, and they lean on him a lot in clutch moments like that, and that touchdown bringing Thompson within four. Yeah, we appreciate the correction there. We had that. We credited that to the wrong young man. That was Landry with the touchdown. And here, a big play here by the Thompson defense. Well, that, well, that 6-5 makes a lot of sense. Yes, it does. Yeah. And apologies for our mistake on that one. Yeah. Now, see, that's some of that penetration that we saw earlier in the game. Really nice job that time um, by uh, Curtis Oliver. Avery knifing inside and bringing up that negative yardage play and making it second and 14. And here's the gift of Williams, who's in the game for the first time here in the second half. And Williams gets that lost yardage plus one back up to about the 34. So it's going to make it third down at nine for the Red Devils. Now you say, you know, second and 14, why, why do you run the ball inside right there? Well, first of all, you got a hot hand right there that you think you know, can get you enough yardage to make that third down a lot more manageable, and that's exactly what happened. Now on this third and nine, you can use a good bit of your of your playbook. Huge play right here. And the crowd knows it. Fans in attendance here. I don't think anybody left at halftime, Coach. No, I don't think so. As a matter of fact, I think a few thousand more came in. <laughs> third and nine offered under pressure and just has to get rid of it. That's really the first time tonight that Thompson 
has been able to get the heat on Alford. Yeah, well, it's the first time tonight, I think, that they've really brought pressure. You're going to watch. They're going to work a little inside twist game and then bring, guess who? <laughs> Vinny Pyres uh, as the third man inside, and he pops clean as a whistle and just nowhere to go for Alford with the ball. Also, Tyler Hicks, a part of that play as well. So a big stop there by the Thompson defense after consecutive first downs to begin that drive. Thompson is set now to get the ball back, and there you see drifting back to receive the kick. Deuce Oliver, who is a very dangerous punt return man. And an end over end kick. Oliver fields it at the 35. But just too good a coverage there as a sea of white jerseys take him down at the 35 yard line. Timeout on the field, 7 46 to go here in the third quarter. We'll step aside for a break and return to our live coverage of the Super 7 from Bryant Danny Stadium. Change lives and achieve your professional goals with a rewarding career at the Alabama Department of Human Resources, the state's provider of social services in all 67 counties. Join our hardworking team that positively impacts the lives of children and families across Alabama. Speak to a recruiter by calling 334-242-1780 or emailing recruitment at dhr.alabama.gov. Are you ready to enjoy the white sands and crystal clear water of our beautiful Alabama beaches? Get water quality updates for all Alabama beaches and coastal waterways and the confidence of knowing the water for your planned play is safe for the day. Alabama Public Television is your place for free professional development, curriculum-aligned videos, lesson plans, and more. Explore resources at aptv.org slash education. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Alabama. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the AHSAA. What you doing? Hey, just finishing this claim to get Dave back on the road. Nice. I wonder what Dave's doing. As championship season is upon us, one question to ask yourself is what team is my lawyer on? Every lawyer at our law firm is a graduate of the University of Georgia School of Law, the number one law school in Georgia, and one of the top 20 law schools in America. But the vast majority of personal injury lawyers, especially these folks you see on TV, could not get into the University of Georgia School of Law if their lives depended on it. So remember, if you want championship level legal representation and you're not at fault, call Briault. Got a chance to take the lead. And Seymour connecting with A.J. Green out of the backfield. Not much of a gain there as Coach Nick's looking over his sideline support material there as he has seen his team make a ton of mistakes in this game, but they've still got a four-point lead as they're trying to dethrone the fourth-time defending champs. They're the last team that's beaten Thompson in these playoffs. You got to go all the way back to the 2018 state championship game. That's the last time Thompson has lost in the playoffs. Since then, it's a 19-game winning streak coming into this one. And there's a big play there by the central defense. Going to make a make it third and long here for Thompson. Yeah, great job by by Jaquan Sanks closing on that. Uh, showed great speed. You know, ran the shallow again in man coverage, and uh, big hit and brings up a very very crucial third down and long. Central has been able to get some pressure on Seaborn, especially here in this third quarter. And they've been doing it with four, and they rush four here. And here comes the pressure. Seaborn has to leave the pocket, and he will be taken down back at the 20. 
And that it was great pursuit there by T.J. Thomas, who came into this game with two sacks on the season. He just picked up sack number three. Yeah, they did. They run a little three-man twist, and Thomas is going to come from his left side position and twist all the way around to the right side of the defensive side. And Seaburn, when he when he rolls, rolls right into the twist, and really just a, a great play by T.J. Thomas. That's a very determined series there by this Red Devil defense. And, and, and that may be as crucial a series as we've had in this game. And when you look back on when this thing is over, if Central is able to prevail, this may be one of the tails of the game. There's John McGuire with the punt. And it'll hit and roll inside the 35. And will be downed at the 32. So here's another look at the yeah. the sack here. If you look, you could see just in the middle of the screen, uh, you could see the twist by Thomas to start the play. He is actually going to be the inside uh, defender over the guard. He's going to loop all the way around the offense's left tackle. Uh, and, of course, Seaburn runs right into the twist. And uh, very, very big, big play. And, of course, you saw in that punt right there that you know, you don't ever want to let a punt roll and give up yardage, but you also don't want to muff them either. And sometimes discretion is the better part of valor. Look out. Big gain here for Simmons Brown into Thompson territory before he was bumped out of bounds by Jaden Brown, but that's a big first down carry. Well, this is great vision on his part and, and really, really good patience. We've seen this a lot. You know, if you watch right here, the play is going to start to the left and watch this thing just bounce and look him slither right through that hole right there. Great vision, shows some speed. And I tell you, the running game has done it for Central to this point. Watch this little slither move right there. Really a nice, neat cut right there. Great vision. 13 carries, 78 yards now for Simmons Brown, and he gets the call again, but this time he gets nothing. Just great job there at the point of attack by Thompson led by sophomore defensive lineman Noah Streeter well that was another slither attempt but that time Streeter put the Coyotes on the slither really a nice job by that young man ends up a one yard loss so second and 11 for Central Phoenix City at the Thompson 35 tight game here in the third quarter four-time defending champs trail by four and Simmons Brown doesn't get much here it's gonna be third and long for the Red Devils and they ran a, a little counter play right there pulled the guard around to get a nice kick out block but they no one took care of that young man right there and the Mike linebacker you know is unblocked and works right to the play look if you look from right to left you see him working in unblocked he's able to get around the uh, attempted block um, by the I think it was the right the right guard nice job by that young man making a big play and you can see why some of that silver paint is off that helmet third and nine Thompson only rushes three Alfred has all day and finds Coleman on a little crossing route but it's great job of tackling Coleman after he made the catch and there's Vinnie Pyres with another fine play on the defensive side. And yeah, they ran a little little scissors route in the middle. They, they, they crossed one under and one over, I think anticipating man coverage, but it, the, the, the scissors maneuver is not very tight. You can see plenty of room for Pyres and company to, to work uh, underneath the route. Really nice tackle by the safety right there as well. And here we go, fourth and nine. Coleman now four catches on the night for 70 yards. Fourth down and nine. Alford under pressure. Still drifting backwards and does a good job just to get rid of the football and not take a big sack back at the 46-yard line. That was a huge play to get rid of that football and save about 25 yards. And you can see really nice pressure right there. You can see that on the uh, defense's uh, right side, left side of your screen, uh, they just win the battle up front, both the uh, inside defender of that side and the defensive end. And just nowhere for Alford to go with the football. Nice job of getting rid of it. Great pressure by the Thompson defense and a big, big defensive stand. So the Warriors offense gets it back. 
First and 10 at their own 33. And this is Brown up the middle, fighting for yardage up to the 37. Four gain of four for A.J. Green, coming in averaging seven yards a carry. We mentioned he was held to only 43 yards on 14 carries in the first half. Thompson would love to get him going. Yeah, they really would. And, and again, that four yards on first down is big. Puts you ahead of the sticks. Nice good run right there and brings up this third down in very short yardage. Green gets four there. So consecutive carries for Green. As Thompson in a third down and one up at the 42. Give it to Green again. He's going to have the first down, fighting his way up across the 45 yard line. So nice trio of runs there for A.J. Green. Yeah, good tough running right there. That actually the safety and linebacker that side were unblocked and he, and he made a nice outside fake inside cut put that back foot in the ground and picked up that first down he's replaced by rj evans here a sophomore checking in at running back so first and ten for thompson seaborn to throw pass is complete Nice job of kind of going down with those hands and making that catch there by Deuce Oliver. That wasn't really great concentration. Again, they they cleared out the uh, the uh, deep coverage with a streak route on the outside. You know, ran about an eight yard out cut right there. And nice job of bringing that ball in. So second down and two as we hit the two minute mark. Intensity in that young man's face and in that young man's face. You've used the heavyweight analogy a couple of times tonight. That's that's what you got here. The, Absolutely. The biggest classification in the state. Top two teams this season. Neither one wants to give an inch. And it's going to be a first down as Seaborn connects over there again with Colvin Landrew, who's putting together a good game. Yeah, he sure is. You know, that big 6-5 frame comes in handy, I'm telling you. So first and 10 at the 42. Good job of mixing up run and pass here on this drive so far for the Warriors. They throw on first down here, Seaborn. Goes downfield and contact, and the flag comes in. They're going to get Central's Jaquan Sanks. I believe it was Sanks con making contact with the intended receiver. Yeah, it looked like that right hand came over the top. Pass interference. You get a look at Defense. It. Penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot. Results in their first down. Big penalty. Let's take a look. look at the bottom of the screen right there. Well, really can't see it. Look at me like the right hand went over the top, and you say, "Well, is the ball catchable?" But in high school football, that's really not a not a factor. It did look like there was contact before the uh, ball arrived, which is going to going to get a flag. First down, Thompson at the central 27. This is Green, and he's tackled from behind. Nice, nice pursuit there from the backside by a young man that's played a pretty good game tonight, Tristan Lyles. Yeah, that's a nice job by Lyles. You, you know, you can see there's good penetration right there. Lyles, you know, gets off his block inside, from inside out on that outside zone play and runs that thing down. Nice play. No gain, second and ten, under a minute to play here in the third quarter. This is one of Thompson's best drives of the game. But can they close the deal with points? They hand it off. This is Green. Green showing good vision and effort there as he gets it down to the 20-yard line. It's going to bring up a third and short. Final seconds here in the third quarter. Really good, tough inside running that time by Green. 
So third down and three. Thompson doesn't have to run the play, and I don't think they're going to. Coach Freeman's going to take the break during the quarters here to discuss his options on third down and three. Well, we're through three quarters in the 7A state championship game, and it's anybody's game. Central Phoenix City leads Thompson 14-10. You're watching live coverage of... Um, Stacy, man, I've been waiting for you about 15 minutes. Hey. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be late. I'm trying to handle something on this app for my taxes. Oh, an uh, app? Yeah, some, yeah, app. I'm doing Why are you using the app? App, app to try to do your taxes? Doing that stuff yourself, man, you never know about the tax law, these new administration, and uh, you'll probably be paying more money through the government by missing some or, you know, just because you don't know what's going on. So you're taking a chance by even trying to do it yourself in the first place. Don't. Don't those don't they like charge a lot? Man, look, the rest of these folks out here trying to knock y'all head out. Tax now got reasonable rates and they ain't trying to you know, do nobody wrong and they've been doing taxes for like forever, so that we need a holiday. Oh, so I need a professional. You need a professional. All right. Tax put that app stuff away, leave that stuff alone and bop with somebody who knows what the hell they doing, okay? okay? Oh good, I look I, I look Tell them Chief Flow sent you. Coach Chief Flow. Okay, I got All you. Alright, now bring your buddy in so we can get this work. <sighs> Um, stay. So I let my pads do the talk. I just say everybody run game now and this year. Song sound undersized, but I feel like a big dog. Even through trouble, I stay 100. See, this year, I'm gonna shot the world. Sometimes you gotta switch your surroundings to show the world your talents. I'll be the first quarterback to throw for over 2,000 yards in my city. I don't do too much talking. See, I'm here. You gotta be one to run. Enough for the talking. It's showtime. As championship season is upon us, one question to ask yourself is what team is my lawyer on? Every lawyer at our law firm is a graduate of the University of Georgia School of Law, the number one law school in Georgia, and one of the top 20 law schools in America. But the vast majority of personal injury lawyers, especially these folks you see on TV, could not get into the University of Georgia School of Law if their lives depended on it. So remember, if you want championship level legal representation and you're not at fault, call Briot. This anybody's ball game going into the fourth quarter. And Thompson facing a third and three. Seaborn to throw it. Passes away and it's caught. It's going to be a first down. Nice run after the catch by Colby Hearn. Yeah, just ran everybody off and set Hearn down right at the bottom of the numbers. Coverage was soft and Hearn knew, knew what to do, knew where those sticks were and picks up a big first down. And they're back in the Children's of Alabama red zone. Colby Hearn now. Two catches for 28 yards. That was a big one. Five-yard catch giving his team a first down. Thompson has not led in this game. But the defending four-time champs have an opportunity here. Seaborn throws to the end zone. And a flag's going to come in. They're going to get interference against Monterius Eccles, who's played a great game tonight. But it did look as though he had... A lot of hands on the intended receiver, Colvin Landrew. Yeah, they, they ran a little a little scissors route again, ran a, ran a post underneath the inside Best receiver defense. by the outside defense. receiver. Penalty had a step on him. It looked like there was the some, some contact Replay prior to the, to the catch. Let's take a look at it right here. Pretty good pop right there. So Thompson, first and goal. Our first and two, actually, in Seaborn. First called run of the game for this young man. And 
Picks up about a yard. It'll be second and very short. How about this Thompson with an opportunity to take the lead here? Well, again, they've been so opportunistic, decisively won the kicking game, and they've made some plays offensively when they had to have them. This has been a great drive right here for them. Seaborn will keep it again, but a great play behind the line of scrimmage made by Briggs Cameron. That is a huge loss for Thompson. Yeah, that, that's kind of the read zone where you have to read the end man on the line of scrimmage. I don't know whether it was predetermined or a misread, but you could see right there that uh, the defender, if you watch the linebacker steps up, I don't know if he was supposed to be accounted for or not, but he is unblocked and just a great, great play right there by Cameron. So Trent Seaborn now five rush attempts minus 16 yards back to back running plays by the freshman quarterback Thompson now third down it was first and two that's third and seven and I think we're going to get a timeout called by coach Freeman he does take time here they're going to talk about it Alabama Natural Gas Association timeout a big sequence here for both of these teams as we're in the fourth quarter. And of course, you know, there's all kind of things to consider here. You know, you want to obviously you want to get a first down. If you can't do that, you want to get close enough where you can go for it on, on, on fourth down. I guess I should add, you wouldn't mind scoring a touchdown here either. Uh, but you want to at least get three out of this. Big stop, of course, is what what uh, Central wants right now and try to get some momentum coming back their way in this in this game. And really, ever since that muff punt, it's, you know, the, the whole momentum of this game has turned, except for that one long run. But Thompson, again, you know, slammed the door on that as well. We mentioned all the mistakes made by Central tonight. A couple of fumbles, an interception, two muff punts, a punt blocked, and kind of leaving the door open for Thompson here. And I tell you what, it, that was an impressive third quarter there by the Warriors. And... Big sequence here, this central defense getting the big defensive play there. As they obviously want to force a field goal attempt here. Yeah. You know, you kind of look maybe for some kind of a combination route. Uh, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you can see the three, three wide receivers to the wide side of the field. That bunch set inside indicates usually some kind of a rub route. We'll see what they... See what they do. So third down and seven. See what the Warriors dial up out of the timeout. Seaborn to throw. Pass is incomplete down at the five yard line. It was intended for Oliver. Good coverage there by Jaquan Sank. So it's fourth and seven. Yeah, it looked like they tried to run a, a wheel route with the number three receiver, the, the, the most inside receiver. Uh, but it never really materialized, and the ball was really not thrown very near uh, any of the receivers. And this brings up a pretty crucial field goal right here. They'll spot it at the 19. It'll be a 29-yard attempt for John McGuire. He's already made one field goal tonight. He's perfect on the season. Gets the kick away. So Thompson does come away with points. They pull to within a point. Makes the score 14 to 13. 10 minutes even to go here in the fourth quarter. So that young man, John McGuire, is two for two in the field goal department tonight. Well, this is the drive of the game coming up right here. I mean, this is this is the most crucial series of, the, of, of this game right now. I'll tell you, McGuire would be a good guy to have on your side. He's, he's money in the bank. He's had a really good season. Well, you know, you think about those two field goals. You know, he's kicked the ball off in the in the in the end zone for the most part. Uh, hung those punts up in the air that have resulted in turnovers. He has been a a really a really big part of this game. Good look at him right there. A chilly night in T-town. About 39 degrees here as we just started the fourth quarter. Here's a look at the. Al Dot drive safe scoring drive 12 plays 55 yards ending in the 29 yard field goal by McGuire pulling Thompson to within a point at 14 to 13. A 
JC standing back for Central. Max Johnson awaiting the kick from McGuire. Well, we got a one point game in the fourth quarter. This game is pretty much living up to its billing and a booming kick, as you mentioned. He, McGuire has got a strong leg. You know, the Super 7 getting underway today here at Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. It started earlier today, and in case you missed it, with uh, some flag football action, Coach. And uh, congratulations to Winonia and, and uh, Central of uh, Phoenix City. Two uh, flag uh, football state champs. Congratulations to all the girls flag football teams for getting here to Tuscaloosa and the Super 7. So here's Central Phoenix City back on offense. First down, nothing on this running play. And we are just getting started here in Tuscaloosa. Coming up tomorrow, a full slate of games. And uh, it all gets started on Thursday with the 3A state championship game between Mobile Christian and Madison Academy. Then you have the 1A game, Cusa Christian and Leroy. And then things will wrap up on Thursday evening with the 5A championship game as the defending champs from Ramsey take on Gulf Shores. Really some great matchups. Uh, I mean, they're always are in the Super 7, but really a little bit special this year, I think. And here is Williams. Good idea giving him the ball as he gets around the edge and picks up six. Going to make it third and short. I tell you, this young man has been quite a performer here in, on this 7A state championship stage. No, he really has. He's up to 107 yards uh, uh, with that run right here. And been a little quiet here in the, in the, uh, in the second half. Uh, man, what a big third down this is right here. Central is two of seven on third downs in the game so far. Big one here, third and three. Alford's pass is caught at the 35. It's a first down. Coleman's loose. He's got a chance to go. And Cam Coleman, the number one receiver in the country, shows you why on that play. Touchdown, Red Devils. Well, that time Thompson rolled the dice just a little bit. Kind of kind of a one-on-one -on -one coverage out there. He ran the slant route to Coleman inside. He breaks the tackle and it's a foot race. And he's going to win most of those. You know, Coach, teams focus so much on Coleman. He can seem to disappear at times. But, you know, a lot of teams will double this young man. And here he explodes here. You never know when he can hit you. Matter of fact, his best performance of his career was earlier this season against Auburn. He only had eight catches. But it was for 293 yards and four touchdowns in that game. And, you know, he'd, he'd, he'd been a little bit quiet tonight. And uh, they'd kind of gone away from him uh, a little bit. The boy came right back to him. A great throw by Austin right on snap. the money as we see Ball start. Offense, Procedure five yards, right there and, renew the try. You know, great players make great plays in big games. And he's up to, look, and tonight is a great example of what I just said. Only five catches tonight, but 143 yards on those five catches, including that touchdown. Yep. Now that was an 83, excuse me, that was a 73-yarder. And could not have come for a more opportune time if you're a Phoenix City Central fan. And the extra point is good by Ethan Paul. Here's another look at Alford connecting with Cam Coleman. And you can see that, you know, that's one-on-one -on -one coverage right there. The slant is right on the money, breaks that first tackle, and there's going to be no catching. Really good throw by Alford, man. He zips that thing right in there, right on the numbers. 18th touchdown of the season for the Auburn commit, Cam Coleman. What an answer. It seemed like Thompson, they, obviously Thompson just controlled that third quarter coach. So this is a big play for Central Oh, Phoenix no, City. absolutely. I mean, it's it's exactly what they had to have because momentum had really changed. And they had really, you know, they really struggled. And uh, just uh, an explosive, explosive young man. It's gonna be a lot of fun to follow his future. He's got it all ahead of him. and. That stretches it out a little bit more, but it's still it's still a, just a one-score game. And here's your Al Dot scoring drive, three plays, 80 yards, only one minute, and of course the huge play. Alford connecting with Cam Coleman. 
Central Phoenix City extending their lead to 21 to 13. Still a lot of time left in this one though. And the Warriors set to get the ball back. Caleb Harris, as you saw him in just a moment ago, he has had some really explosive returns in the game so far. This is they're going to kick away from him this time, and it's going to be fair caught at the 29-yard line. Yeah, really a nice pooch kick. Uh, worked across field, good height on it. Was, was so high, not possible to get a return on it, and. It's about the worst field position that uh, Thompson has had on the, on the kickoff return in a good while. So good strategy by uh, by Central. So first points of the second half for Central comes by way of the huge touchdown pass, 73 yarder from Alford to Coleman, and now Thompson, their offense takes the field. Look there, Colbin Landry, who has become a very important part of this Thompson offense. Seaborn gets rid of it quickly, as he has several times tonight. Gets it to his running back out of the backfield, A.J. Green, but a very short gain. Great play there. Again, Monterius Eccles has had quite a game on the defensive side of the football. Yeah, you know, they've been running that swing route uh, into areas that have been vacated or, or to the single receiver side. That time they ran it. Uh, right into the three-man receiver side and it brought a lot of defenders over there as well and not much going. Seaborn to Green again. Sure-handed tackle there by Eccles. It's going to make it third down and six. There's that little quick arrow right to the outside that they've had good success with, but that time pretty well defended by, by uh, Central. And this is th there's third down and five here. I think you could say this is a pretty big play right here too. Seaborn, same play again, and Green is going to hurdle over the tackler and yeah, pick gonna, up the first down at the 41-yard line. It was Eccles again on the stop. Yeah, he's going to get it by about a yard and, again, trying to get the ball to a money player to pick up a big first down. So the Warriors move the chains. First down at the 41. sideline getting the play set now third or first down and ten here comes the blitz from Central Phoenix City the pass is downfield Deuce Oliver makes an incredible grab over his shoulder at the Central Phoenix City 36 yard line well they brought pressure uh, from the uh, from the weak side Seaburn uh, chose the vertical route down the field and just a great great one-handed grab on the other end. Watch this right here. Watch him stick that paw up there and bring that thing in. Deuce Oliver. He had 72 catches coming in into this game tonight. And you can see why right there. That's this is great athletic ability. Fourth catch tonight. We're going to have a timeout taken or a, a challenge here by Coach Nick. So he may have may may be challenging that this ball hit the ground. I didn't see it. But I was so enthralled with looking at the top end of the catch that uh... we'll take a break and come back and take a look at it ourselves. Moving on the field we'll with our was a completed a catch season. for a first down. Central Phoenix City is challenging the call. As championship season is upon us, one question to ask yourself is what team is my lawyer on? Every lawyer at our law firm is a graduate of the University of Georgia School of Law, the number one law school in Georgia, and one of the top 20 law schools in America. But the vast majority of personal injury lawyers, especially these folks you see on TV, could not get into the University of Georgia School of Law if their lives depended on it. So remember, if you want championship level legal representation and you're not at fault, call Briault.
The world is a backdrop and Modern Stills is one of its most up and coming photographers. He specializes in senior portraits, event photography, maternity and wedding shots, sports photography and more. Modern Stills was voted 2017 Photographer of the Year. Whether you need a studio look or you prefer the outdoors, Modern Stills is your number one source for image capturing in the Tri-City area. For more information, visit us at our website, ModernStills.com or call us at 706-536-6372. Um, Stacy, man, I've been waiting for you about 15 minutes. Hey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be late. I'm trying to handle something on this app for my taxes. Oh, an uh, app? Yeah, some, yeah, app. I'm doing Why are you using the app? App, app to try to do your taxes? Doing that stuff yourself, man, you never know. About the tax law, these new administration, and uh, you'd probably be paying more money through the government by missing some or, you know, just because you don't know what's going on. So you're taking a chance by even trying to do it yourself in the first place. Of course, the question is, is there enough to overturn it? I think I'll let that gentleman right there decide that. <laughs> but, you know, usually what you look for is, is, is the hand or the, or the arm underneath the ball to cradle it? And, and does the ground aid in the, in the reception? I don't know. After further review, the ruling on the field stands is called. Completed catch. Central Phoenix City is charged for a timeout. There you go. They will have wow. one challenge remaining for the game. Well, from those replays, you can clearly see why Coach Nix would throw the red flag there, but not uh, evidently not enough in the officials' perspective to overturn the call on the field. Yeah, I mean, he, he clearly had the ball in one hand and brought it back inside. And, um, you know, it's really tough to determine from the angle that we had right there. So the call stands and here we go. And it's first down at the Central 36. Seaborn throws deep. Landrews got it, touchdown! Now you talk about threading the needle because there, there were three white shirts right around the football but he put it right where they could not get to it and boy i tell you um, young mr colvin landry has had quite a night he had 25 catches and averages about 20 yards a catch he had 11 tds on the year so it, it, it's not like he's a rookie out here but boy he has become the go-to guy and now we go for two i'm sure Let's see if they can uh, tie this thing up what a throw by Seaborn. Three defenders around Landrew, and he threads a needle. Try for two. And a whistle, and they'll throw a flag and stop the play. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, five-yard penalty, redo the try. Now, for throwing the football, it you know it probably doesn't hurt you that much. It gives you actually more of the field to, to work with. But the thing that it does do pretty, pretty much eliminates the run as a possibility. And, of course, that, that's going to change the central defensive call a little bit. They'll be much more pass-oriented. Freeman discussing placement of the football. They're going to move it over to the left hash. Yeah, I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see some kind of a sprint, sprint out or roll back action right here. Of course, sometimes when you do that, why you try to sneak somebody out the backside for a little throwback action. So we'll we'll see. So the try for two take place now from the eight-yard line after the penalty. Seaborn throws and it's incomplete. Oliver, the intended receiver, the coverage there by Sanks and the try for two fails and the score will remain 21-19 and Seaborn's numbers now 20 of 31 for 193 yards and two touchdowns and this was a beautiful pass. Yeah, it really is. I mean, that ball's right on the money. 
put it really the only way, only place that it couldn't be defended because you can see there's a lot of white shirts around. Second touchdown grab of the second half for that young man, Landry. Really a beautiful throw and catch right here, and the two-pointer goes goes for not. So we've got a two-point game with 7:02 left. You see Coach Freeman coaching up his players on the sideline, and well, something did not jihaw on, on that two-point conversion uh, because you know they ended up with four receivers on one side. Usually that's going to be kind of a little rub route with. You know, with something working underneath back to the inside, but just never developed. So McGuire will get set to kick it off. Max Johnson awaits the kick at the five-yard line if he gets an opportunity. This this kick actually will be fielded by and returned by Johnson. And he spins out across the 25, and that's where... Central will set up shop as a flag comes in after the play. Yeah, that one was tossed um, on kind of a line drive, and usually that, that can be a personal foul. After the play is over, personal foul, return team. Personal foul kicking team those penalties will all set first down oh, the dreaded offset you, you you know that if if it's thrown on a line drive it's usually a personal foul if it's thrown high in the air it's definitely a personal foul if it's just dropped it's a hold you know you know you, you taught me you that <laughs> you're, you're right <laughs> You're absolutely right. You, you've seen enough of that in your career. Here is the give. A flag comes in at the end of this play as Simmons Brown picks up about four, but looks like this one may be another penalty against the offense, and it is holding the call. Pretty good hit by that young man, Peyton Lewis, coming in from his safety position. Holds a big call. Holding. Offense. Penny is 10 yards in the previous you know, spot. The thing you want to do from Replay a from first perspective is you've got a two-point lead. You want to try to milk that clock, and you want to stay ahead of the chains. Well, the holding penalty right here sure isn't going to help you do that. Big difference between second and six and first and 20. So first down at 20, back at the 11-yard line for the Red Devils. Here's the handoff to Brown, and nothing there. Middle of that Thompson defense looking stout on that play. It's going to be second and still about 18 to go. And, you know, they've, they've gone away a little bit from... from Working that left side that last couple runs have gone over to the right side not quite so much success right there and I, I think they hope to pop that run obviously, but Now second and long and you think they're gonna just about have to go to the air right now and Kind of wonder where number eight is Offered hands off to Simmons Brown and he takes another big hit this time from Thompson's Jaden Davis. So here's a third down and short, third and about two. Well, again, you know, kind of a conservative play call right there. Try to run the wrap play right there, bring the, the right guard around, but good, tough Thompson defense right there. He's gonna bring up this third down and you know, almost 12. Big opportunity here for this Thompson defense if they can get off the field on third and 12. They show pressure. They bring it. Alford backing up, throws, and it's incomplete. 
Thompson brought the heat and it forced Alford to get rid of it and the Warriors defense makes the stand here. But again, like they did earlier in the half, you know, brought some pressure, collapsed the pocket, broke up the rhythm of the play and Alford's just got to get rid of it. You know, trying to run a little smash concept. Good, good coverage deep. They doubled uh, uh, the deep defender right there. They doubled Coleman and just know where to go with the football. Freeberg set to punt this one from around his 10 yard line. And over end kick. Oliver snatches it at the 45. Oliver into central Phoenix City territory before he stopped at the 43 yard line but the Warriors offense will take the field with great field position and another decisive play for the Thompson Warriors in a kicking game forced the you know forced the punt to get out in a hurry it was low kick returned it and as you said as you said making setting up shop on the central 45 yard line Here comes the Thompson offense, led by that young man, ninth grader Trent Seaborn, who's thrown for 193 yards and two touchdowns. Here's the Thompson offense with a chance to get the lead for the first time tonight. And a nice run on first down is A.J. Green. Takes it inside the 40. They're going to spot him out at the 39, a first down gain of five. Yeah, ran the counter that time, pulled uh, the, the uh, backside tackle and guard. Haven't seen much of that tonight. Uh, ran it with good, good success right there. So second down and five for the Warriors. Here's the handoff to Green. Not much here as he stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, same same play again that time. Not, mu not much success. I said it was a backside guard and tackle. Looks like it, it's the H-backs coming through. And as you see, a, uh, a young man that is going to figure into this right here. I mean, they're close to his range right now. Uh, he's hit a 50-yarder this year. They need about, about nine more yards. Yeah, about seven more. Third and five, fake to Green. There's Oliver inside the 30. Well-designed play, excellent execution, and it is a first down for Thompson. Well, this is the RPO look that, uh, and you know, this was probably pre-read before the ball was ever snapped. Uh, there was not a defender very close right here. Ran the hitch off of the uh, quick run fake to pick up a, another big first down, and they are well within field goal range now. Fifth catch of the game for Oliver. That was a big one there. Two of his five catches have been on third down conversions. First and 10 at the Central 26. Here comes pressure from the Red Devil. Seaborn hit as he throws, and the pass just sails out of bounds. Seaborn really took a big hit as he released that football. Now well, they brought edge, they brought edge pressure from both sides right here. Collapsed the pocket. Just a good speed rush by both outside linebackers as, as they come, and you can see very fortunate that, that that ball was not knocked loose for a turnover right there. Goes incomplete. Second and ten. Clock stopped on the incomplete pass with 333. Second down, 10, Oliver in motion. This is Green getting the call and getting nothing. So here's third and 10 for Thompson. Not a place for the faint of heart up there in those two lines right now. It is a war inside. Good, tough inside play that time. Try to run the inside zone, nothing. Third and ten. The central bring pressure again. We shall see. They rush four. 
Seaborn throws toward the end zone. Landrew, the intended receiver, Eccles, though, right there with him. Boy, those two have. That's been a game within a game tonight. Number four for Central, number four for Thompson. Yeah, that was really good coverage right there. You, that's what you want to try to do is ride that hip and, and let the sideline help you. As a matter of fact, I, I really believe you look down the right side, I, I really think that he steps out of bounds, and even if he would have come in and caught the ball, it would not have been a legal catch. So, so here's your field goal, Coach. They're going to spot down. it at the yep. 33, a 43-yard attempt to give Thompson the lead here in the fourth quarter. And again, he does have a 50-yarder this year, so this is well within his range. Oliver to hold. McGuire's kick is no good. Wide left. You know, sometimes you try to get a little, a little extra on it. Looked like his plant foot maybe was a little bit, uh, a little bit cocked. Went across his body, ended up hooking the ball, and the drive goes for naught. A lot has gone right tonight for Thompson in the special teams department, but not on this field goal try. I think he knew as soon as he hit it that, you know, that he had hooked the ball. All right, so 2.46, of course, what uh, what Central would like is a nice, nice long drive to close this thing out. Of course, Thompson wants, wants that ball back. And this is Williams in the game, and he is tackled from behind by Benny Pires after a gain of three. You know, the thing you want if you're if you're on offense right now is you want those four-yard plays. Those four-yard plays keep you ahead of the sticks. Uh, it, 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 it's going to run that clock down, and, of course, they're going to milk this thing down probably and force Thompson to use their timeouts. But they're going to have to get, you know, five or six on this next play. Second and seven, Alford keeps it on the ground with Williams. And Williams is stopped at the 26, so that's going to set up a third down at four, and it's also going to bring a Thompson timeout. Stopping the clock with 157. The Warriors would love to get the third down stop here and then get the ball back as this timeout is brought to you by Alabama Natural Gas Association. And, of course, from, from an offensive standpoint right here, you know, you, you don't want to put the ball in the air uh, because you don't want to stop that clock. But on the other hand, you got to get a first down. And I'm not sure you're going to get it running the football right here. So be interesting to see what they come up with. Huge, huge third down play. Coming up here, you know, you know, you would think that that Tristan Williams would figure into this, and they try to get the ball in his hands. Although his second half has been relatively quiet, not near the production that he had uh, in the uh, first half. Now you see both coaches talking over their strategy here on a huge third down play. As we take a look at uh, Mr. Williams and see if they could, in fact, do call his number. Williams with 119 yards rushing tonight. He doesn't get the call here, though. Offer to throw. Pass is caught. Where did the receiver step out of bounds? It's all about the spot, and it looks as though it's going to be a central first down. Well, they ran a little a little rollout pass to the right and run a, a high low on the uh, flat defender right there. Nice job read up by Alford. Dumps the ball underneath and gets just enough for that first down. Great shot there by our camera guys. Just enough. First down at the 30. A minute 52 to go. Now it's back to the ground game. This is Williams. He's going to be tackled for a two-yard or one-yard loss, depending on the spot. Two-yard loss, and there we get another timeout by Thompson. Yeah, and, and those and those safeties now. I mean, they're 
they're going to be fourth linebackers now. It's going to be very tough to run the football because those safeties are, are going to be down in the box. Now, here's where we are, 143. That's Thompson's last time out. If they stop him here, they can get the ball back, but they'll be well under a minute. And the timeout presented by Alabama Natural Gas Association. It's Patrick Nix trying to lead his team to victory here tonight against the four-time defending champions from Thompson. You know, Mark Freeman trying to make a little history tonight, too. If he could win tonight, that would put him in some elite company in terms of well-known coaches in this state that have won at least seven state championships. Yeah, he'll, he'll, be, uh, he'll be at seven if he can do that. I think there's three in this state that have won at least seven. Two have won eight. But, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> it's not crowded at the top. That's, that's for sure. Thompson now out of timeout, second down. Here comes the pressure by the Warriors. And Alford keeps it and takes a big hit at the 35-yard line, but he got down after a seven-yard gain. And he wants a targeting call, but don't think so. You know, that was a nice call by Coach Nix. That, you know, that's the zone read. And, of course, uh, Thompson had, had brought the house, and that thing would have gone for a long way, except, again, those safeties are playing down. You can see edge player comes for the dive and normally that would have gone a long way but that's the safety coming down hard and making the big hit it brings up another third down and five and they're gonna they'll run this thing down they probably won't snap it until there's about four seconds left on the play clock which is right now Williams on the handoff Williams takes a big hit at the 43 but he's gonna have the first down that's gonna do it and it's fitting that number 24 <laughs> picks up that first down. What a game for Tristan Williams. Barring something crazy, which we have seen before. And now we've got a flag. Well, this is this is a clutch run. That got a first down that should put this game away but as we've learned never say never well here's Kirby Michaels one more time dead ball unsportsmanlike conduct defense penalty be 15 yards from the spot be a first down You can see the excitement building on the central sideline and in the, the stands for the fans who've made the trip here to Tuscaloosa. Correction, correction. The unsportsmanlike conduct was on Big offense. Nice that young man. Was on the offense. 125 yards with the game clock operator. The the night, please yeah. set the game, the game clock to 50 seconds. 50 seconds. Thank you. I'm kind of like Coach Nix right now. I'm not exactly sure what just transpired. Well, hopefully we can get all of this sorted out here. Spotted back at the 28. And, of course, uh, Central will get into every every coach's favorite formation, the victory sneak. You put a pigtail back deep, and you handle that snap and try to put this game away. And I think they're going to let them play now. And 
Victory formation for Central Phoenix City, and we've got another whistle. Not sure if this play is going to count. AC Williams on the central sideline. What a game. 18 carries, 125 yards, two touchdowns. And again, the big run to seal the deal a moment ago. Offer takes an E, and that'll do it. The last team to beat Thompson in the playoffs was this central team in the 2018 state championship game. And Patrick Nix and the Red Devils have come to Tuscaloosa and done it again here in 2023, stopping Thompson's streak at four in a row as Central of Phoenix City wins the 7A state championship. And time now for our play of the game. And it was a biggie. Alford, short pass to Cam Coleman, but Coleman, great run after the catch. This was a 73-yard strike, and Coach, this was after Thompson had pulled to within two points. Yeah, and really like the momentum had gone the other way, but as we said earlier, great players make great plays in big games. Cam Coleman, what a night. Five catches, 143 yards, and down to Christina, who's standing by with the winning coach. Coach, this one was a battle all the way to the end. Oh, ho, what ho, can ho, you ho. say? Get out of here. He's gonna keep it. Close call there. We almost got doused with Gatorade. That's coach. not even players. Who is, I don't even know who it is. Coach, just walk us through the grit. Battle. I mean, hats off to Thompson. I mean, they, you know, obviously down in the first half, but just the, we knew they weren't going to give up at all. They're going to battle. Been here, done that, you know, and the hats off to them. Coach Freeman, his guys did an incredible job of competing and battling, staying right in the game. And, you know, I hate it for them to miss a field goal, you know. I'd rather win the game than them have to lose it like that. Um, you know, but thankfully we were able to hang in there. Some some, some bad things happened to us, and our guys persevered. Joe you know, just kept hanging around, kept battling, and kept fighting. What does it mean for this community, this team, to knock off the four-time defending state champs? That's just great for our kids. Our kids battle and have worked, you know, very hard for this opportunity, um, and went out and got it done. You know, and so just very proud of them. Very thankful for our community, you know, to be back in this position, and um, you know, thankful to all the coaches support, administrators, you know, our players, everybody, the whole community. Big win. Very big win. Congratulations, Coach. Thank Go you. celebrate with you. Thank team. you. Congratulations. Central Phoenix City overcoming three turnovers, two muff punts, a block punt, a touchdown call back in the first quarter, and somehow through all that, the Red Devils amount amass over 400 yards of total offense, and they win the 7A state championship. Well, you know, it always comes down to five or six plays in any football game, and, you know, Thompson uh, uh, came back like a champion, but in the end, Central had, had enough. Got big plays when they had to have them, got the drive when they had to have it, got the key first down when they had to have it, and the end result is your 2023 7A state champions are the, the Central Red Devils. For the third time in school history, also the third state championship for head coach Patrick Nix. So we're setting up for the post-game awards ceremony, which we will have live coverage of here from the Super 7, presented by the Alabama Community Colleges here on Alabama Public Television as the fireworks go off here at Bryant Danny Stadium. Wait a wait, what a way to start off the Super Seven. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I can't say that it was an artistic success. There, you know, there there were a lot of uh, you know a lot of miscues, but boy, I tell you, these two teams battled right here. And if you you look at, it, I think a couple of stats that stand out. One of them, you'll see the rushing totals. Uh, very, very lopsided. That's always the difference in a championship game. And then the other thing in, in, in this is, you know, the unforced errors that you, you know, talked about earlier <clears throat> that certainly kept Thompson in the game, gave them a chance to win. But in the end, just really too much uh, Central Red Devil. And I know you won't say this, but I'll 
talk about how good Coach Rhodes is. Before the game, you and I are talking off the air, and you tell me that you think the difference in this game could be Central's ability to run the ball versus Thompson's ability to run the ball against them, and that's what you see in that top stand. Yeah, and I, and I think that this, in, in the end, that was a difference. I mean, 222 to 47. You know, it's hard to win football games rushing 47 yards. Now let's turn it over to our public address announcer for the post-game awards ceremony down on the Super 7 championship game. To commemorate this incredible accomplishment, each head coach will receive an official Wilson Championship football. Presenting this year's championship footballs is Brandon Dean, director of the Alabama High School Athletic, Dire Athletic Directors and Coaches Association. First, from Thompson High School, Head coach, Mark Freeman. And now, now from Central Phoenix City, head coach, Patrick Nix. Join us in congratulating both coaches for an incredible season. Now, please join us in welcoming Paul Henderson from Encore to the field along with J.T. Lawrence, Assistant Director of the HSAA, for the presentation of the Most Valuable Player Award. The 2023 most valuable player for the Class 7A state championship game is Cam Coleman from Central Phoenix City High School. This time, I ask you please welcome Central Board Member Chuck Markham from the Department of Education to the field, along with Kim Vickers, Associate Executive Director of the HSAA, for the presentation of the 2023 Class 7A State Championship Runner-Up Trophy. Your 2023 7A State Championship Runner-Up is the Thompson Warriors, led by Head Coach Mark Freeman. And now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, please give a warm welcome to Executive Director of the HSAA, Alvin Briggs, and Central Board Member, Holly Sutherland, from District 7, for the presentation of the 2023 7A State Championship Trophy. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2023 7A State Champions are the Central Phoenix City Red Devils, led by head coach Patrick Nix. Congratulations to the 2023 7A State Champions. Well, there's a new king of the mountain in Class 7A, and there you see them, the Central Phoenix City Red Devils, your 2023 7A State Champions. Nothing like it. Coming up, we will send it down to the field with Kevin Skarbinski, who will have a wrap-up of day one at the Super 7. We'll take a break, continue with live coverage of the Super 7 for Bryant-Danny Stadium in just a moment. Are you ready to take your career to the next level? With Lawson State Community College's adult education program, you can earn your high school credential for free. You may be eligible upon graduation for two free courses that will assist in transitioning into post-secondary education, where you can choose from college transfer to career technical options. Take the first step towards a brighter future. Enroll in Lawson State